Okay, going back. What am I on? Oh, okay. <clears throat> um, I put my <clears throat> other keyboard up there, one that I'm actually using, because I realized <clears throat> when I dropped my pill and I realized how cranky how, <laughs> that just flat pissed me off. I thought, well, that's not that big a deal. Um, I'm just getting tired. I'm, I know I was feeling kind of tired, but I'm getting really hungry now. I ate a little Hershey's nugget thing. That helps, but that's not a meal. <laughs> and and the thing is, is I ate. Oh. Huh? Yeah, I woke up at midnight. Took me, you know, till one. I think I, I went straight to get something to eat. And I didn't know if I was going to stay up or go back to bed. I just ate what I wanted. Uh, I ate my chicken patties. I didn't eat them before I went to bed because I didn't know I was going to go to bed when I did. I didn't know I was going to get tired. I ate like a lunch thing, you know, and that doesn't last me when I sleep long enough. I usually sleep 10, you know, 10, well, it's been crazy lately, but anyway, usually 10 to 12 hours. And years ago, I used to always sleep eight hours, but that's what I slept. I slept eight hours, got up, ate my chick, three chicken patties and uh, macaroni and cheese and potato salad and I figured well, I'll probably be sleepy <laughs> and but it lasts me sleep however long I need to but I I, it, I was woke up so I got up and got on the computer and so you know by one or two I was on the computer well now it's noon so uh I didn't realize I've been up for 12 hours already lots of times I get tired and go to bed after I sleep 12 hours up 12 hours you know but uh no wonder I'm tired Okay, so I got to eat something. I kept wanting to put it off. I wanted to do my video. I, I, I'm like kind of frustrated that I've had to do so many tests just to get the audio and everything to the point where I would want to do, a, you know, a live video about audio. I was going to put my new, I was going to go ahead and plug in my new cable, and I wanted to do some, I wanted to show some audio settings and stuff, but I didn't want to, uh, well, there's certain, you know, there's so many things you can't do while you're, while you're doing live. Uh, you know, and while you're recording, you'll break it, you know. So that was trying to get it to the point where I didn't have to do very much. So now, after all the changing in the gain structure and getting, I finally got, I'm happy with the SM58. I'm happy with the, uh, let's go ahead and do it next. Let's see. Well, no, first let's leave the SM58 where it is and just check between the uh, Wi Fi audio. It, it got so far behind, I couldn't even tell what was going on. I, I would switch. Well, I turned them both on. That's how I figured it out. I turned them both on, and I finally heard what I was saying like full, oh, you know, like two seconds ago. So let's do, let's see. Anyway, what I ended up doing, I tell myself this uh, note to self. I um, I turn off the app and turn it back on. It uh, didn't help a lot, but I think it helped some. And then I thought, okay, I noticed in the settings. You can set each one of your sources when they're, <clears throat> uh, well, audio cam three is uh, coming. It's just the audio on cam three. I can use one or both, or, you know, I can use just video. What I do with my with my phone cameras is I use just the video on two of them and then audio and cam three. Uh, I originally named it cam three and that's just how I've left it named. So I just say audio uh, cam three and uh, so if I get in here, see, I, I was showing that a while ago. I should, well, let's don't do nothing to it uh, right now. And, uh, yeah, I'm getting too tired to hardly remember what I just got through doing. But let's just test it, see how it's doing now. Uh, what was I trying to say? I've turned, okay, you can tell them to keep playing when they're not visible, or you can tell them to turn off while they're not visible, then turn back on the stream. Start and stop the stream is what I'm saying, not turn the camera on. Start and stop the stream because this is a, a, a an IP stream is what it's picking up over the over the Wi-Fi. Uh, <clears throat> they call it a VLC stream in here, but uh, anyway, VLC would pick up an IP stream, but it also pick up a lot of other and play and pick, and record, save and record IP streams. Anyway, that's just what they call it. I guess because that's everybody would know what that you know know what to do with that. But uh, I mean, I knew what to do since I saw that. So. Uh, um, 
so I set it to, I had it on keep playing all the time because I thought it needed, it would lose the auto if I didn't. That's why I remember I saw it and I go, wait a minute. That's, I've been doing my camera. I, I figured out that doing my cameras to, you know, start and stop. Not, now, there's another one that says pause and unpause, but that would just, and what happens is when they play a long time, they, uh, when, they're, when they're streaming a long time, it will uh, build up so much uh, use of cache and memory in your system that, uh, you know, it, it, it's, what the effect is is it ends up getting behind, <clears throat> way behind. <clears throat> and uh, so I, I, uh, I turned off the app, turned it back on, and then I lost my audio. So, well, let me go ahead and just change that setting to off when it's not visible, on when it's visible. Maybe it'll cause it to come back in because the, uh, the, the streams will sometimes do that and sometimes they won't. Sometimes you get it. If it won't, you have to close OBS and open it back up and, and it'll find them again. But it worked. Uh, and it was looking fairly decent. Uh, it's going to always be behind with the Wi-Fi, just like the Bluetooth. But uh, let's let's go to it. But, turn it on uh, first. Let's let's go to it. Yeah, check one, two. Turn it on first. Two. It's yeah, check one. It's two, a little behind. Check one, two. It's the S and fifty eight. I can tell that by looking behind. at it. The S and fifty eight. I can tell that by looking at it. I've looked at it for so long, so many years now, several years, <laughs> three or four years. <clears throat> uh, check one, two. And so I kept playing with the settings. I ended up turning the compressor back on. And uh don't think it'll break it because I had that open earlier. I opened it up without really thinking about it, and it didn't break it. So, so I've got the gain up to 19 now, and I think that's going to be okay. It will clip if you really collect your tongue real hard, and especially if you put your head down a little bit. But if I don't have it that the gain up to 19, uh, if I just go down to 18, then it's uh, it's just not. Up in, I want it to the check one two. I want it to be kind of bouncing into the yellow, with about the mid mid to top end of the yellow, but not bouncing. When I'm talking, I don't want it going into the red, of course. And then I went ahead the noise gate. I looked at it and then I decided it didn't. Well, it was fine. It was working great. It's setting good. Uh, and so the gain in the gain didn't. I got myself turned around about should the gain you know have any effect on the noise gate or not. And, uh, no, it really wouldn't because uh, this is straight dB. You know that's what it senses. So closes it closes anything below 55 dB. It opens at negative 50, uh, negative 55, and then negative 50 dB, <clears throat> so that you can be heard. They can't be right the same value. I figured that out trying to do it. Or uh, you could put them closer, but. <clears throat> that that work. That's what I worked good for me with this this particular mic and then I thought I didn't delete the compressor so I thought well let's turn it back on and see if it helps and I don't have any output gain you can turn on you can do output gain on the compressor and that will generally you do lose a little volume when you're using a compressor and if you, if you lose a lot then you can uh, you can turn on output gain but that also can real quickly distort your signal you don't know, gain it too much so I don't use it unless I really need it and it was, didn't have any in there. Uh, I didn't change. Uh, I had left it on its default. It was it was a 10 to 1. Well, I went ahead and jumped way on up there. It, it's crazy because, let me think. The DBX compressors that I used to use, are the rack mount gear, uh, 10 to 1 was the max I ever used with a screaming uh, grindcore metal band or a screaming, you know, hardcore band or metal band or whatever. Those are all considered, you know, metal band, grindcore, hardcore, those are considered three different styles of metal. But uh, anyway, and they are, they're different. You can tell the difference if you get, you know, get into that stuff. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> 20 to 1, I can't remember ever using 20 to 1. Maybe if I got somebody that was hogging up on the mic and doing the grindcore and going, you know, um, might might do that, but uh, a regular anybody that sang, then ten to one was usually too much. You usually stayed around. Well, you start at two to one, and maybe you go to five to one. Five to one was the most I generally used. Uh, those compressors were good. <laughs> you didn't need more. But when as soon as they came out with all this, I got into 
you know, digital audio and video, especially audio, before all these programs were invented, you know. Uh, just got, and it was kind of lucky that I already knew how to do it with rack mount gear, you know, and pro audio gear. So I already knew the principles and everything. That's why I was interested in learning it on the computer. So I got in, really got into computers in 98. I, I, learned, I learned a little bit back in 92 on a Windows 3.1 machine, making spreadsheets and stuff. But they just didn't have, they did have, they did already have some audio gear, you know, audio software and computers that could do audio and stuff but and video. But they were so expensive, you know, you, average human being couldn't, <laughs> person like me couldn't touch them, you know. Uh, so anyway, uh, in this, I think it goes up, I, I pulled it all the way up to the top, I'm not going to mess with it anymore, but it's, I got it on 20 to 1 and that seemed to be good. And what I'm trying to get at is 10 to 1 in so, most of this software uh, is more like 5 to 1 maybe, probably about 3 to 1 in, in, a, in a rack mount gear. Uh, and in 20 to 1 is more like, I would say 20 to 1 is kind of like 5 to 1 in a, in a, in a DBX compressor. I'm sure, I think a couple times I used, I loved Ashley EQs and I got to use them quite a bit, but I think once or twice I was running a show where they had an Ashley uh, compressor. And Ashley is just really high quality uh, pro audio gear. The DBX is good, but it's, it was kind of the... Uh, workhorse of the industry, you know, it wasn't super cheap like Behringer, but it was not super expensive and super high, high quality, you know. Um, but I've never heard nothing sweeter than an Ashley EQ. And of course there's other stuff that I never got to hear, but, uh, and I never mixed on any super big expensive consoles, you know, I mixed on Yamaha mixers, some uh, PV, and uh, mostly all on Mackies, 1602s or 32 channels, 24 or 32 channel Mackies back in the throughout the 90s. <clears throat> but then uh, in the very late 90s, they started Behringer come out, started coming out with some mixers that were you know fairly decent, and I mixed some on, the, on on a couple of them. And then I that's why I ended up buying this little. They call it an eight channel, but it's kind of, you got to go around the block and through the back door to get eight channels out of it. It's got two mic channels, two stereo channels, and then the rest they consider to be channels or what, what you know, just the RCA records and, and the effects send and return and stuff like that. You can play around with it until you can actually have eight inputs, you know, but <clears throat> that was just something you you usually didn't have to do on a Mac. If a 16 channel is plenty for mixing most bands, you know. Uh, and if you did, well, maybe to put the, like I would usually use the RCA inputs to plug in my tape, my tape back from music between, you know, I could play music during set changes or before the show or after the show and stuff like that. We always carried a, usually a CD player, you know, to do that. So anyway, 20 to one, uh, the threshold negative 18 dB was the default attack. I played around, oh, I did re the release. I noticed that release was 60 milliseconds, and I was watching it, and I thought, that's something might be a little fast. I put it all the way up to 150, and I actually didn't see a whole lot of difference. And I thought, well, you know, I may not see it in the signal, but I may hear it. It may take way too long to let go, so I did 90 milliseconds. You have to learn your software. It, software, it's not all, you know, all the... Audio Pro, audio, the DAW software and for Audacity and uh, like you can do that kind of stuff in Audacity but it's not real time, you know, you have to do it and then save it and then see what it sounds like, you know. Um, but uh, um, that's the difference between destructive and non-destructive editing uh, with audio and, and video. but. Um, I'll see. Audacity might have some non-destructive editing now, or but when I first started editing audio, the, the any of that, you know, well, I, I would get freeware and shareware, you know, back in Windows, and uh, and uh, and that was the one, one. Gold Wave was the one I learned and liked a lot, and I used it on. I see. I recorded over the years. I recorded two albums. I have two. Uh, I used to sing and write lyrics, and uh, I had met people that would play and record and for me and stuff and 
So I didn't have, couldn't afford to buy recording gear, and uh, um, and by and back then uh, I start I, my first recording was in, I took uh, why am I telling see now y'all know I'm tired because I'm telling super long stories. I took an audio recording. I took media communications class, and one of the uh, I was trying to get a degree in media com communications at junior college, you know, and back in '92, and I was going to school after work. Uh, and I really enjoyed that, but I didn't. But you also had to take, you know, math and stuff, and I'm terrible at math. But uh, I got laid off, and I had to, I had to, you know, quit going to school. I couldn't afford it. But uh, I got to take an audio class. Well, we were so did, yeah, audio, no, no video, audio mixing, you know. And uh, my first recording uh, was me singing with some friends playing the music at the studio they had there for the, you know, for the school. And we recorded on a, a four four track, reel to reel, <clears throat> and uh, I learned on. That's what I first when I was a kid. My first recorder was a reel to reel four inch, like three or four inch reel to reel deck. I recorded all kinds of things with it, you know. And back then I didn't sing or anything. And then I got a cassette or Radio Shack cassette deck and recorded even more stuff. And did a little project in school with a couple of guys, a couple of guys in class, and and. Uh, you know, and played it for the class and all that, and we got graded on it. And <coughs> I think it was sort of more of an extra credit type of thing or something, because not everybody even knew how to do stuff like that, you know. But uh, I think we had a choice of writing a story, or if we wanted to, we could, you know, record one. I don't remember how come we got to do that, but we did. We, and we put some funny stuff in it, and we got a laugh out of it, and that was fun. Uh, so, um, so this, I, I, that the video delay, I had to see, yeah, I had already turned that off. So, uh, the, the video delay async is set on 30 milliseconds. That, that's what I ended up at. I don't remember when I turned it off, but it's off now. I don't know if I already had it off when it got so far behind or what. I think it was when it's, I think I noticed it getting behind it and I turned it off because I didn't think it was helping. But anyway, um, I, I can, this is real time here. I can turn this on and off. And you can't see whether it's selected or not when you're highlighting it, but you have to highlight. Well, you don't actually have to highlight. We have to highlight it to see what you're set on. But I can leave it on compressor and then turn that on and off. And it'll do like that. Oh, I see. So check one, two. Hello, check. Hey, check one, two. Let me stop. It's way behind again. It still ain't stopped. I don't think it's. it's I don't think it's going to be usable. I don't think it's really helping, so I'm going to leave it off. Uh, close that. But now, after spending all these hours. Uh, doing the uh, go to the desktop itself since that's what I'm more interested in showing. But after all this time, so here's the video I'm making right now. 12, 13, 32, 12, 13, 12 is when I started the video and it's 12, 32 now. So, uh, oh, and here's a screenshot I was going to show when I did my live stream. Uh, this is what happened the last time I did a live stream. So an arrow error. You need to change the video resolution. The current resolution is 3840 by 2160, which is not supported for this configuration. The expected video, and then it cuts it off, but it says it right here again. You need to change your video resolution. The current resolution is, which is not supported by this configuration. I don't know what configuration they're talking about. The expected video resolution is 2650 by 1440. So, uh, and I, that's one of the things I was going to talk about in my video. Um, I went ahead and went in there and changed it. <clears throat> Let's see if I can show that without breaking anything. Okay, if we're on the desktop. We're, we can't change anything. Remember, don't change anything. But you can go into the settings. I cover up all that feedback stuff, that video feedback, it won't drive me crazy. 
So stream just has your stream key and stuff. Output. Uh, I thought I had it set to rescale output to 1920 by 1080, and then I realized, uh, oh, that was grayed out. Uh, and then I kept looking and looking, and uh, I changed, oh, yeah, I changed the, I was recording in FLV, but I think I read in YouTube that they're going to stop supporting FLV maybe this year sometime. So I, the MKV was the default. I, I, it doesn't, I don't know if it would really matter because I'm not actually making a flash video file. Um, uh, that is just my uh, container. I'm actually uh, the transport stream and the container. I, I can't remember all the words to say right now. But anyway, uh, it, uh, OBS works really good with its defaults, but it was really working my machine because I've got uh, even this 12 core, <laughs> well, 24 core with hyperthreading and 64 gig of RAM, you know, and eight gigabyte video card, it was still really, it was making the fans ramp up on this server. So I thought, well, it's working it awful hard. Let's don't, you know, let's don't, I want my, I don't need it to be 4K, you know, so, uh, and I knew I couldn't really stream 4K on my, I have, I have 200 megabits down, but I only got four megabits up and it'll stay around five most of the time, four and a half, five, but that's not really, I'd be using up too much bandwidth for, you know, the rest of the house, you know, even if it did it. <clears throat> but uh, evidently I was doing it when I got this message, but then it was, I'm not sure what was happening. If it was really streaming 4K or it it was set. I'm set. My, OBS, and I was trying to get to that point. OBS is set to the full 4K, you know, of this monitor. And that's, see, when you're doing desktop background, that's what I set it to. I set my palette the same as the desktop. I had to to get things to fit. And then I thought it was re, uh, I thought it was dropping, the, you know, rescaling it to, not, you know, 1080p, 1920 by 1080. But it wasn't. It's for some reason the settings that I've selected or something happened with an update. I've seen some updates with OBS that it doesn't do that. And then the audio replay buffer, I'm not using that. Okay, so we're on output mode. There we go. Now, audio, that's just the audio uh, settings and, and sound cards and stuff. And uh, <clears throat> like I'm always talking about that. Okay, so my desktop audio default, which is the, uh, the sound cards, uh, digital audio portion of the sound card that goes through the HDMI to the TV. Now, <clears throat> auxiliary audio is this, this is the USB, and that's the input. And then I could, I tried one day to turn on the output, and it jacked things up. I think it made, well, I had trouble, I, know, I had a real trouble getting it to even just work at all, but I don't remember. I might have just been tired and confused that day. I don't even remember. I don't want to mess with it because it's working great now. I don't want to use it. The audio well if I want to use the audio output all I have to do is go here and uh, just select it this is the uh, ready this is the sound cards uh, that, I, that I play back on and then if I want it I don't click on it because it might select it but uh, and now I might forget that I've done that <clears throat> but anyway this is my uh, USB sound card and that would be to to have it used and it'll either or either or you can't do both now i think i'm almost positive i could if i wanted to get in there and set up uh pulse uh well i'm using uh, this is ala alsa audio uh interface software and it also but it's got it used to pulse audio had to be done separately but now that it they do they work together but if you want to do multiple inputs and outputs then you uh, then you need to you need to learn how to use jack audio and it's all on here but i'm not using it i have before but you have to have it always boot up and run in the background for it to work and, and some when you when you unplug things you know and you turn things off then it it kind of goes it tries it it, it 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 usually just automatically deselects them and then the next time when you do have it plugged in it's not turned on and you got to go back through all the jack settings to get it I'm, it's a really awesome set of programs. It's not just one program, but it is a huge learning curve for me. Uh, 
it's kind of like learning to mix sound again, all over again in a different way, you know. But uh, and the input is where I've been leaving that so I could look back and see what my signal looks like and adjust it and all that. But here's, uh, see, that's my, what I'm using for input. That's the one selected. That is from my camera, my USB, which actually I tried to turn that on the other day and I couldn't get it to work. I think I just didn't have things turned on right. What was it, what it was. This is the monitor. I don't know what those are good for. They always show up monitor of it. it Usually when you select them, they don't do anything. Or once a couple of times over the years, I selected them and they would just like be, it would cause an echo. You know, they'd work, but they'd just cause a huge echo. And then there's a monitor. Uh, I really wanted to be able to use my this for my input, but I couldn't get it to work. And what it's really for is to send audio back on another channel over the HDMI. And I think, and what I read about, it's really for special you know, audio video equipment that has that feature. So I thought, well, hey, what if I could plug into those RCA inputs and it would pick it up, you know, that uh, at the same time as push, putting out audio over the HDMI, but picking it up over the analog RCA, but it didn't work. And if it can be done, I, I couldn't figure it out. So I quit messing with it. And then here's my, uh, here's the uh, hardware right here. That tells you what you know what what it's set to and stuff. But the for my input, I'm using this one here, CM108. And for my output, I'm using the eight, uh, Elsimir, LS, L, Elsimir. What a name! Elsimir HDMI audio on the radio and RX4075. I don't know why there's so many. It's a 570 if I remember right. Uh, video. Card. I guess that's the the driver. Probably the driver will work on all of those. That's probably what it is. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> that's just some of the stuff I wanted to get into. I think I've decided I'm just going to upload all these videos. And I just still want to make the one I was going to make, the live stream. But I just thought I would hurry and just make, quickly make a little live stream. And I, I wasn't ready yet. I, I remembered that I had to, re, you know, reset my mic and put volumes in there levels and stuff and uh, so I'm still doing it <laughs> still trying to get all three of these to work I didn't think I'd have to do anything to the audio cam 3 because it was already working but since the whole gain structures changed I had now I got to work on after once I got them figured out now I got to work on it to get it work and by the time I got it working it it it, it pooped out of just running so many you know, several hours like that it's probably from seven till now seven eight 10, 11, 12. Well, no wonders. It's been probably on for five hours. That's about the max I can get out of them. If I'd have had a, a, another Wi-Fi camera, it, and that's the router. Now, that, the router's what uh, it gets its cache and RAM. I probably just need to reboot the router. I'm going to have to eat something, so I'm going to do that. I'll just, I rebooted the modem and the router this morning early, but I'll do it again. Turn And I'll turn these phones uh, off and put them on the charger while I'm eating. And uh, maybe they'll just be ready to go again. Um, maybe it'll start working right again. Okay, so, um, yeah, I'm kind of blank. Oh, so did I get to the point where I explained what, what I did? No, I did not. Video. Okay, now on down here in the video. Oh, you can't do anything because of where... Video app is currently active. Please turn off any outputs to change video settings. Okay, so see, it's protecting it this time. You can't change it while you're recording. And I'm recording right now. So I had uh, both of these, and I don't remember how I... I knew, I thought I had it set for the pal, the canvas to be, thir you know, four, full 4K that this TV, that's the size of its screen, 3840 by 2160, and... Uh, this was the same, and so I guess that will make, uh, I changed it to what they said I needed, 2650 by 1440 on this error message on YouTube. So I, I imagine that'll be okay now. I started to just go to 1080p, but I thought, well, let's try that first. If I can stream that. Uh, evidently, I was, I was streaming the full thing, and then they were cutting it. Because what happens is it still worked. My stream still worked. 
but it was cut down. I saw the size. I watched it back, some of it back, and it was cut down to this size. I think it just said 1440 on the, when you're watching it. But, uh, <clears throat> so, um, if I can do that without any trouble, then I'll just I'll just start doing that instead of 1080 because 1080 is uh, getting a little on the old side now. You know the size is. Uh, now that I've got this 4K TV, I'm really liking it, man. I can see stuff so much better. That was why I went in and bought such a big TV. Uh, and I knew with Linux that I could change the text font sizes and stuff to where I'd be able to read it. Some applications, just all the all the ones that uh, are made to run on the Mate desktop uh, that that have set you know the settings obey the Mate desktop settings rules, they are perfect. But the ones that are made by KDE, they are they're doing their own thing. They're wanting, looking for KDE settings, and I don't have KDE installed. I used to do that, but when you install several different desktops, and they all want to take over, and you know they'll fight each other for these kinds of things, and uh, so I, I don't do that anymore. I used to just do it just in case I wanted to mess with them, or for I always I do like to, let's see. I think I may have, X. I usually at least install two because if uh, Mate gets broke, which has happened, uh, then you can just, at the login screen, just change to, uh, well, I don't have a login screen on this one. It's set up like a server. I have to type login in the, in the command line and then type start X. But, <clears throat> so I don't know. I may have never even installed uh, one, one that I figured out. Uh, I like some of the XFCE apps, like the search. I use it all the time, that one there. Uh, and I love a lot of the, the like my favorite file manager, uh, this mouse is hard for me to control, uh, Crusader, that's a KDE app. And uh, say KDE, I'm talking about the software, uh, this is about this KDE software, I guess it's a foundation, see it's KDE.org, just like, you know, Linux and uh, mate and genome and uh, there, there's quite a few different uh, desktops for Linux. It's not like Windows where you've just got the one. And, well, well, there are some others. There are alternate desktops you can get, but you've got to be a what they used to call a power user to learn how to to be, to be able to figure out how to do that. You got to know enough about the back end of Windows to do that. So um, this is what I'm guessing will work and. Um, but uh, no, even when I, no matter what I checked and changed, that, that's what's got me kind of confused. Is no matter what I checked and changed, I could not change this anymore. And there used to be the whole list of just all the sizes were in there. And you could just click on it. Or now you can't because you're streaming. But I was checking it when I wasn't recording, and I was able to change everything else, you know. But uh, so I'm recording still. If if I understand it right. Yeah, uh, I know I have been recording in 4K. Uh, the codec and everything is standard. I, you could change it to, uh, you can change it to FFmpeg. Uh, actually, what I'm using is H.264. I think I still am, unless I change something by accident. Not yeah, H.250. 256? No, not 256. Two. 264. Yeah, it just put an X there, but 264 is what I'm in. I, my, my, what is it? Is it 256? 265? I guess it's 265. Um, anyway, that's what my uh, surveillance cameras do. And it's, and there's, it's supposed to use like less uh, file size, less bandwidth, and all this stuff uh, than 264 even. Uh, so that's why, I, that's why, why I'm going, you can, uh, so I'm using that. Uh, they say, well, you know, they say you can use 264 or 265, 256, or whatever it is. Um, but I couldn't get it to work in anything but uh, 265. I'll say 265 because it's probably what it is. Looking at that, and uh, but that's the top. That that's it doesn't have the 265 in OBS. But I was doing FLV for all these years because it was the I read. I guess I read somewhere that it used less resources. I wasn't even considering using it because I thought, well, that's flash. I don't want flash. But really, you're not really using flash when you do that, uh, like in this way, because um, 
Um, because it's really still making an MP4. That's what it's doing. Even it, it's really weird. Uh, I, especially when I'm tired right now, can't even think of the you know containers and transport streams and which one is which and how to say it. But uh, um, you may really be making an MP4, but it may have like in this case, it can have an MKV file extension. Where is it? Yeah, MKV. It is, there are differences, it's differences in quality and stream and, and bandwidth and, and what it needs and what it uses. Of course, the higher quality usually uses more. And it, especially now, the biggest thing is the higher the quality, and this is, <coughs> I believe it is a higher quality than if I'm using FLV. <coughs> but uh, it's, um, well, they look great on uh, in the 4K mode. Anyway, let's get out of this before I jack something up. Um, like the first, um, that one there, let's see. I don't know if that was the first one I did when I got on, started streaming, you know, install OBS on this server, this HP. Well, there's the name of it right there. One, I, <clears throat> I usually name, that's how I named the, these videos so I would know what, you know, if I, if I ever see them separate from this machine, I'll know where they, where they came from. And then I went to FLV. Looks to me like the file sizes really aren't that much different. Like, you have to know how long it is to know if they should be, to, you know, compare them. But just kind of glancing here. I went back to MKV today because uh, I, I kept, I've been in back, on the back of my mind I, ever since I changed it to FLV. I thought, I know I read somewhere that YouTube is at some point, either this year or next year, going to quit supporting FLV. They won't let you upload them anymore, you know. So, and these are what I, they're basically my backup. When I'm streaming, they're my backup files, and I don't upload them unless my stream gets messed up and gets blocked, broken or something. And but it's really nice to have them. When and besides that, if you if you stream onto YouTube and then you go and you turn around and download it later, you're going to get like half or three quarters of the quality that you uploaded. They don't give you the full quality. If you go, even if you go and you know to that thing and get my stuff, they send you a zip file. You still don't get because I've done it a couple of times you don't get the original quality that you sent up so um, especially if you start working in 4k which is what all these recordings are um, yeah every one of these is going to be in 4k I think that these ones I did here are going to be 4k let's start playing that first one in VLC and see make sure it's going yeah it's defaulted to VLC. We'll look at the codec right quick. HG64, impact, that's what I was trying to say. Let's see if I can pause it and keep that up. I'm not sure if it'll stay up or not. Yeah, it will. Okay, so um, HG64, MPEG4, AVC, Part 10, AVC1. That's what you're getting. Now, if it's a MKV, I'll, I'll look and make sure, but I'm, that sounds exactly like what the flash files really, that's what they really are. That's the stream coding. Now, the resolution, though, is changed now to 2650 by 4. Okay. It did go down. So, I don't, uh, the palette, although it's the full 4K, of, you know, same size as my monitor, I'm not recording that size anymore. That's fine. Uh, no real need to record that that huge of a video, you know, uh, the buffer dimensions, um, frame rate, I always go for 30 frames per second. And when you're streaming, you may, your stream frame rate will actually go up and down and be variable depending on your bandwidth and stuff. Um, decoded format. I really don't know. Oh, you YUV. Oh, huh. Now I'm familiar with that with the, the, uh, webcams, USB cams, the YUV, there's like several of them with a Y, and that's usually the one that works the best overall. Uh, but anyway, I didn't change that. That was just the default. And then about the color parameters, I don't pay attention to all that stuff. Uh, then stream one, okay. Stream O and stream one. Okay, now stream one is the audio. MPEG, AAC, audio, MP4A. So it's not just an MP4 anymore. Now it's an MP4A. I didn't even realize that. Audio, stereo, 
um, sample rate 4,800 hertz and uh, bits per sample 32. <clears throat> so that's what you're getting. And then there's more stuff like just in that section. You can fill those in. It's kind of weird because some of these things you can fill in and it will actually save it to the file. I guess if you have to click on that or something. What does that say? Oh, find metadata using audio fingerprinting. Well, I'm not going to mess with anything. Um, there's metadata. It's You can see metadata is things like, uh, well, all this. You can put that in there manually. There's programs that are really make it really easy to do that. You, I've tried it in, o, in VLC. Some things you can change and it'll keep, and some things it won't, and I never remember which, and so I don't use it. And that's, this would be showing the real-time data. See, now it's showing what's going on here. So, um, I'm going to open that other one. Oh, I should have left that. Okay. Now, let's open one that is an FLV. We'll just do... There's the audio insert cable that I bought, and I, I was unboxing a bunch of stuff. Let's see. It has to be playing for this right here to open up and work, but you can uh, pause it. I wasn't sure if you could because I usually just leave it playing, look at it while it's playing. See, X260, exactly the same, but the resolution is 3840 by 2160. Same, it's all y, the YUV decode, decoded format. Uh, I didn't realize that YUV, I thought that was only for where, you know, USB cameras had that used that protocol. I didn't know. Uh, it says decoded format, planner. I don't really know the difference between planner and all the other stuff. I don't know what for, that looks like a, Resolute, you know, like this. This is this is sixteen, uh, whatever sixteen by whatever. But four, two, zero. I would think that would be the old four point. Well, yeah, it's not four point three. That's what a uh, TV what well, used to be until they went to the widescreen. But uh, <clears throat> other parameters and then the audio codec still the same thing. Uh, I didn't get into I didn't get into changing the. Um, stream so I get let's see you see what the video what I'm trying to get at this is an m h264 mpeg4 video but you could transport it stream it over quite a few different transport streams uh, and if yeah and if FLV would be one of them uh, and the reason I used it I uh, when I never used view, I never used flash stuff at all. I didn't like it because it was so. What's really crazy? It was so intensive on resource usage. But for some reason, when you use the FLV, which is the flash, uh, some FL, something flash something L. I don't remember the L video. Uh, <clears throat> we I, I always just I always just call it when you read about it. That's, the FLV is the flash video format. So I always call it the flash video format FLV file extension but it's actually not what FLV stands for and I don't remember what it does but anyway these are the streams but the transport stream you're using well th this is a recorded video so it's not showing that but if you were uh, it might show it in there well it held all that stuff in there there's some things you can look at to tell you what your transport stream is when you're uh, some I don't know I guess it's not in OBS. It'll. I mean, it's not in VLC. It's actually it might be in OBS when you're streaming. But uh, I'm gonna get out of there now. <clears throat> Let's not plan on getting off into a whole bunch of stuff here. Well, no, it just tells you says you're not live. Uh, recording, yes, you know the red dot. Uh, see, oh, it's using 11% of CPU, 9.68 frames per second. You, it changes the frames per second when you do desktop because the desktop actually works better on lower frames per second. But if we go to the uh, 
We won't see. Oh, if I go to this camera, let's see if I go to M4 and desktop, it might change it. You know, it went down, not up. Uh, but uh, maybe because it's got so much more data. Anyway, I, I've seen, generally if I'm just on my camera, I'll do it and then report back here. Okay, there we go. It jumped up to 22.7. The target, you know, the, the most it would do is 30, and I see it at 30 all the time. It went up a little more, and that's 24, that's 19. But that's that changes all the time. Um, so uh, when you're do, using streaming software like this. Well, there's there's variable bit rate and constant bit rate, which, no, that still wouldn't make the, that's still another thing. That's That wouldn't make the frames per second stay. You can... Some software, you can tell it you have to do 30 frames per second. But if you do that, well, if you're streaming, it'll break your stream. Uh, that's the main thing. If you're recording, uh, I think what will happen is you'll get those video glitches instead of just dropping some frames. What I, it's just dropping some frames. Like the video will still be considered, like I was showing, 30 frames per second. It'll still play at 30, tell <coughs> the players to play at 30 frames per second and all that. But. What it'll do is drop frames, and so you might see jerky movement and stuff like that. You know, you'll see I'm moving my hand across here, it might be going like that, <clears throat> sort of. <coughs> or, or you might get, like some cameras can't, this one, it'll, oh, well, there you go, you got a little bit of ghosting. It'll get real bad uh, if, if you're at a really low frame rate, because what's happening is there's, you're moving faster than the frames are in the, because really, actually, video is like, well, 30 frames per second. It's taking 30 still shots per second. That's what it's really doing. <clears throat> but it plays them together so fast, it's, it's a moving object. That's how they invented video, you know. What do they call those things where uh, it has like a whole bunch of pictures that are just slightly different, and you, you look at them and, and they sp you spin them, or you, sometimes you, the old, old ones, you'd spin them you're with your hands yourself, you know. <clears throat> They're really cool. Something, something old scope, <clears throat> but um, that was uh, the first video, really. And then, but early video cameras worked on that principle before they got to you know film and stuff. <clears throat> they had uh, they had a name for them, but it was just a whole bunch of uh, still shots. Like if you, if you know how animation works, you know how originally. Even as recently as the 70s, 60s and 70s, it was still, there wasn't digital animation, you know. Uh, it was all a whole bunch of pictures drawn by artists, and then they were uh, flipped. <laughs> I don't know, I don't remember how, I don't, I never learned how they did it professionally, but they would, uh, kind of like that flip screen, you know, they would flip them in front of a video camera and, uh, um, Somehow they made it, you know, enough pictures and, and move fast enough to make it uh, show up. <clears throat> well, all your cartoons and stuff, you know, on TV, uh, that's how they used to be done. But, uh, so anyway, that, that was the, one of the main things I wanted to do. So if I get too tired after I eat, I guess <laughs> I'll have that done. And I can just upload the videos. I still want to make that. Well, I can always just make another live video about other stuff. It's just, it's just hadn't been working out for me to make uh, one quick. You know, I was just going to make one lot. It wouldn't be all that quick. It'll been at least an hour. That's how I am. But what is that? So I'm on right there. Properties, filters, and there's a pause and a play button. Is that how you do that? I don't think I can pause it. I don't remember ever seeing that before. Huh. Okay, so here's what it's, I know what it's talking about now because I kept seeing it. There's no, yeah, there's no pause button. So that's where the pause button is. I'll just say it. I won't go open it up to settings again. But if you're in settings and you might, you might have seen it if, if, when I was in there, there's big yellow letters that say, if you use this format, you can't uh, 
you can't pause the recording, you know, during the, uh, can't pause the recording while you're recording. You either start it or stop it. And that's why I've always done it anyway. And the way I do it is I, I do my live streams and record at the same time. That's normally how I do it. So I don't like to have to spend more time uploading videos. You know, I want it to just be done when I'm done. It's, it's done. You got an uploaded video and you got a backup video. And, uh, <clears throat> um, but if the stream breaks, you know, something goes wrong with the, you know, with your internet connection or, or with the server, with YouTube or whatever, um, then you've always got that backup. And I've used them enough times. But I never even, until I saw that message, I never even really thought about, uh, I thought, well, it would be good to be able to pause your recording and then start it again for lots of reasons, you know. You'd actually cut out all the crap, like if you have to get up and, like I've had so many times when I had to get up and go to the restroom you know, and then come back. And sometimes I would just stop my stream. Sometimes I would just put it back on the, uh, the beginning titles and, you know, with the music and cause the, the video uh, music file I have is like 30, 40 minutes long. And so I can leave it, <laughs> I can get it playing and it'll just play nothing but instrumental me messing around with my guitar and, uh, for until I get back and say its stream is starting soon. So if somebody happens upon it, they'll know that it's not just a dead stream. You know, you don't have dead air. So just like on radio, you don't want dead live TV or direct radio. You don't live radio. You don't want dead air. So, uh, um, that's it right there. Oh, pro properties filters. I didn't really notice those. Uh, I don't know if they've always been there, or if it's in this version, but, uh, I guess that's a, oh, I guess that might be another way to get into the properties. You can just right click. I'm not going to mess with stuff. I don't want to break it. But uh, I watched a few videos this morning. Uh, well, I watched some on, uh, I just thought, you know, I've, I've always heard about Twitch, but I'm not a I know it was for gamers, but I was like, well, uh, and I went there before and I was like, it's just somebody playing video games. Well, who in the world would want to watch someone play a video game? If you like video games, wouldn't you want to just play it? You know, and then I, I left. That was Oh, what the heck there, you know, what's, what's up with all this? And that's been several years ago. And now, well, I found out they're, uh, they're chain, they're, they're branching out. Well, I'd heard that before there and it's, you know, it's, that's not where I meant to go. It's a uh, more, uh, got a whole lot more, it's more popular, more viewers than ever before. And I found out today and, uh, I figured that, but, uh, but they branched out. They have some that are just for chat. You just get on there and you talk to I guess you, I, I don't know if you actually, I guess you could talk, you should be able to just talk, actually talk back and forth instead of having to type. But uh, since it's over video, but uh, I guess, well, I think what normally I think they have been doing is like a gamer is streaming. And they're doing their little gaming and then they have these texts. They were showing how it, how it works and they have, but you can put it, and I didn't know they, uh, that everyone on my, well, I only watched two different people but well one no wait one was a gamer and the other one was just somebody giving tutorials on how to use obs and he was showing how to but he did mention twitch and stuff but anyway showing how to put your chat from twitch oh he like well they were putting twitch over here and youtube chat over here on the right to where uh, it would show in the video oh i don't have the desktop showing anymore what i was trying to say and i was talking about that all this time there's the pause button and everything that i was talking about Pause, stop, uh, and we're at 53 minutes. And down here is where the, the time's down there. I know I've always noticed that. Um, I would think that's probably for the stream, but it's not being actually. I guess you're still streaming, but it's being it, it's making a stream and you're, you're streaming and then it's saving that stream. That's how it records, you know. But anyway, I don't want to, I didn't want to, uh, oh, yeah, it's if you're using, okay, I'll go in there and just don't change anything. Uh, if you're using, pull that off over here, and it still shows up because you can see the whole screen. Uh, okay, stream, that's just, where you're going to stream to now you can pick twitch and some other stuff up there i've never done anything but youtube um output recording there it is 
Warning. Here, uh, I'm trying to make it work. Everything shows up as much as I can. Okay, so <clears throat> warning. Recording cannot be paused if the rec recording the encoder is set to use stream encoder. Now, if I, if I use a different encoder from the stream, that means the machine's got to work twice as hard. And even though this is a powerful machine, I don't want to, I don't want to, well, I, for one thing, the first, when I, first time I used it and tested it out, I left it on the defaults and it worked this machine so hard, it was loud, you know, it made them fans really, it was handling it, but it, it made the fans so loud. This is server, you know, it's meant to be, it's not, they're not, it's not worried about noise when they build a server. They're worried about, you know, longevity, power, <coughs> uh, keeping it cool. And uh, <coughs> so anyway, uh, I've never changed that. Uh, I've seen that. I think I saw it in the older versions. But I've, ever since I got it put, you know, this just a couple of months ago or three months ago, I put it on this machine. and I put it on there and didn't really start using it yet because I still hadn't yet got everything set up. But uh, so I've never, you know, even though I saw that, I hadn't paid much attention to it. I thought, well, it'd be kind of cool to be able to pause the recording, but I don't want to double up on the workload of the machine, even this machine. If I stop talking, I can hear those fans there, you know, this whole, ever since I started doing OBS, you know, they've been singing, but not super loud. But, uh, And then there's this, there's a replay buffer that will uh, save back some video, audio and video. Uh, and I don't know, you know, it says replay. It doesn't say stream buffer. So I, I turned it on before, but it, it worked. Well, it worked the, uh, the old Lenovo off too much. I could tell the difference. I think it says if you click on it and use it, it'll tell you how much RAM it's going to use. It uses more RAM. Yeah, it's a buffer in RAM. That's what it is. So it saves it in RAM, which could be good, uh, especially on a maybe it's kind of, okay. It could be good on a machine that that the processor can't process the video fast enough, and you give it a little, uh, you know, it it what it'll do is it'll it, it it'll before it starts streaming, it's going to put some in the buffer, right? But it's going to but you better have a lot of RAM. Well, I do have a lot of RAM. I could use it, but <clears throat> I it just seemed to. Worked, uh, it, it didn't work well on the level, but it's only a quad core with a four gig RAM. I'm, I've got two six core processors, 24 cores with the hyper threading, 64 gig of RAM, and eight gigabyte video card. You know, I've never had anything like this before. And uh, by the way, if yeah, if you wonder why I'm using a server for a, a desktop machine, uh, that's why. Uh, and also, uh, I, you know, I've been making videos for years. Well, I've been making videos since I was a kid. I, my grand, uh, well, my ma well, I didn't get to see, see when did I start? My, when I was a teenager, because my ma my mama, my grandma, on my dad's side, she gave me, she has a brownie eight millimeter silent movie uh, camera. And she made videos of us, you know, all our lives growing up and everything. And she gave it to me when I was 16 or 17. Yeah, I remember I was driving, so I might have been 16. And I used it, but the, already by that time, the film had, was not as readily available. It was getting more and more expensive. And then I used it up until my, in the mid eighties, uh, not a lot because of that. And of course you always have to wait for the film to come back. And that, you know, so my, my kid, my first daughter was born in 1976. So, and so, uh, I used it, you know, with her and, uh, then I, I, my young, I had a son and a younger daughter. She was born in like 82, 83. So um, I, all of them, I had videos of all of them. And, uh, um, and I, ever, since I, ever since before YouTube was a thing, you know, I dreamed of YouTube before YouTube came out for several years. But I was on dial-up. I couldn't, uh, and I had... I had learned how to set up a web server, an Apache web server. There was a lot about, you know, making videos work that I was trying to learn and, uh, you know, streaming video and all that. Back then it was, uh, you know, audio was all waves or real audio. 
that was it. And then MP3 came out, and I learned that. And then uh, I was really into audio too, you know. And I did put, I built my a website. My web, I still the same as it was. I never changed it. My website has uh, has some waves on it that I put on there originally. And then when the MP3 came out, I put all my music on my website, DonSongs.com, uh, for people, you know, free downloads. Uh, and they're still there, and uh, both albums. But uh, <clears throat> um, I wanted to do video, but you know, on dial up, you just couldn't. It, they start. They did have some. Well, Flash was the one that actually. The good thing about Flash was that it would work on dial up. Small videos, you know, like two forty or three hundred and twenty at the most, by whatever you know. Uh, there wasn't seven hundred and twenty p wasn't even a thing. Yet, you know, that was that was high definition. That was HD TV when it came out, and uh, it was still 4.3 aspect ratio at first. But um, I think, well, you could—I guess you could pick between 4.3 or 16. But anyway, um, um, you couldn't stream it, but you could download them and watch them if you if you wanted to spend a, all night downloading a video or something. But and I used to whatever I, I'd do that. I'd leave my I would leave, go to bed and leave the uh, all up on and, and start downloads, you know, and let them download all night. You know, wouldn't, wouldn't, that way the phone wasn't tied up, you know. And, uh, cause we only had one phone line. <clears throat> we never did get more, you know, we never did get two lines or anything like that. But, um, anyway, uh, oh yeah, I just what kept coming in my mind really. Yahoo had a peer-to-peer -peer network system they set up where people could share music uh, and videos, small videos, and I, I really liked it. I was using that. Uh, and uh, what it was was, this was before Napster, if you remember Napster. Uh, Napster copy, you know, they, they used peer-to-peer -peer networking as well, like, and they became real popular. But Yahoo was doing it, and uh, at first it was just fine. You know, there wasn't any copyright trolls or anything yet. And uh, <clears throat> we go ahead and okay. So I showed that. I'm gonna get out of there. I'm talking about something else. Um, and uh, um, but after I don't know. I think it was maybe a year before they started having trouble that copyright people started getting on because what you would do is um, uh, the, the concept was you saved your you you had your music on your computer and you were just sharing it with people to listen to it wasn't for you to like give them the file it was just so that they could uh, well you had to download it to listen to it on dial it I think you could actually stream the music, but I think you could also download it and save it. And that's what got them in trouble. That's why they they abandoned the project. They just ended up abandoning it. And then, but Napster was kind of a CD outfit, you know, and they just kept doing it until they got sued and shut down. You know, they kept on and on doing it. And they they had some sort of little thing that they said, "Oh, it's legal." Um, because of so-and-so and, -so and I, I guess because they were doing it because of the peer-to-peer -peer networking there was some kind of loophole they thought they had or they did have for a few years because they were around for quite a few years to where because it was it was the whole concept of you're sharing with your friends you know they used to say that all the time about videos and movies and stuff uh, it was uh you know it was and it's you know it's legal to share a movie with your friend let you know if you have a visa Back in the days, and when those days when we had VCR tape movies and and DVDs, you could you could loan it to your friend and they watch it and they give it back to you. You know that never was illegal. Uh, it was the whole thing of making copies and selling. Well, really, most still really. Well, the way they you know they started finally they started saying okay you can make one copy you know for backup but that's all. Uh, um, as far as the laws go. But uh, the sharing, of course, what people would do is, well, some people would <laughs> go. Selling them was the main thing that was illegal at first. That was what they went after anyway.
but then it got to the point where even people like making copies, I don't know if they ever really tried to go after or if you did it on the internet where they could trace you, you know, but if you did it, like if you, act, you made a DVD of another DVD, then they really had no way to know about that, you know, and getting like, say, you know, but you'd have to be pretty generous to spend DVDs weren't cheap to make five copies and then give them to five friends, you know, <clears throat> um, but it was a selling, uh, this went all the way back to, uh, you know, when I was growing up and used to record music off the radio and stuff. That was that was some um, companies didn't like it, but it wasn't illegal. They couldn't do nothing about it. But it wasn't also a big revenue killer. You know, it wasn't killing their revenue. Uh, not too many people were doing it. And uh, I would record, well, uh, oh, I, I used to, when, cas when cassette, uh, players for cars came out, you know, rate tracks, they didn't, they were just crap. You know, they would, they would, the more they played, the more the tighter they got. And then they would just eat, get eaten up by the player. Or I spent days trying to, you know, you could spend a, three or four hours trying to unwrap. You could sit there and wind an eight track and I forget how you do it now, but you could open it up and wind it in a certain way. And if you did it right, you would get it loose or just getting them back into the thing when they'd get, you'd get 20 foot of it out, you know, because what they'd do is they would hang on the cap stand in the player and it'd get rolled up around it. And most of the, most of the time you were lucky if all you got was a little noise on it. A lot, sometimes it would break the tape, but I knew how to repair, you know, tape. I mean, I learned all that when I was a little kid with real to real tape recorders, but, um, uh, but we didn't, my, my grandma, my mama, she had tape. She had, uh, videotape splicing kits and machines. She would edit eight millimeter videos. She would put them together in the order she wanted them in with this little, and I, I have the thing. I don't, I don't know. I think it's out in the garage in a box, but it's the coolest thing. Uh, it's got two reels and a little screen and you can see what you're doing in a little cutter. And you had this glue you could buy, you know, at the, wherever you bought, it was Kodak stuff, wherever you bought Kodak stuff. Uh, but, and it worked, and it lasted many, many years, you know. But what I would do, I didn't have all that one. I bought what well, she gave me that camera, but she kept she kept all that stuff and kept all her movies until they passed away. And then I got I ended up getting all that stuff. But uh, um, uh, she was really well. My my mama was a smart lady. She was a school teacher. She was born in nineteen hundred. Let's see. Yeah, born in 1900, and in 1920, she began to teach. She's graduated college and began teaching school when she was 20 years old. And she was a teacher all of her life. And she, so she loved to learn. And uh, I always admired her for that. I could ask her about anything, and she'd know something about it because she just loved to read and learn. And actually, I take after her. I loved to learn. I just I wasn't good with, uh, you know, school books and uh, math. Uh, but I loved learning, always have. Um, and I, well, that's why I like video so much. You know, I, I learned, I learned a lot from watching, uh, video, you know, well, well, I didn't watch instructional videos too much when I was young because there really wasn't a whole lot of it out there, but, uh, I would pay attention to TV shows. And I remember when I used to learn new words from Johnny Carson, when I was a kid, he, he used big words and I'd learn them, learn what they meant. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> But uh, that was the Tonight Show. He was the, I guess he was the original Tonight Show host, yeah. But, um, you know, Jay Leno and now, what's his name? The guy from Saturday Night Live, I forgot his name. <clears throat> but anyway, um, Jimmy Fallon, yeah, Jimmy Fallon. He's the only talk show host, host left that I can stand to watch. But, um, um, blank. <clears throat> so anyway, I have no idea what I sidetrack I was on and what I was saying. So, um, that audio didn't work. I know that. Let me turn it back on again and see what it's doing now. Sometimes it'll, it'll, it'll drop all that cash and get back to normal. Didn't work. I know that. Let me turn it back on again and see what it's doing now. Sometimes it'll 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 drop all that cash and get back to normal. All right, now we're on the 
Check one, two. When I click my tongue, that tells me. So I turned it to, uh, I think I can click that without breaking anything, especially since I'm not really using it. But see, I think if it's in the scene that you're on, am I, I'm only on cam four. Okay. Uh, well, let's just go to the, yeah, let's go to me and the desktop. That way I, I know I'll be showing both of us. Okay. So, yeah, okay. So let's go to the, uh, I think it's just the regular properties to see that. Oops. Trying to make it bigger. This this mouse I'm using, I'm not I'm not good with it. Okay, so yeah, stop when not visible. And uh, I'm trying not to cover up. It's kind of it's it's weird because I know that I this whole thing shows. But uh, oh yeah, so I'm not covering up. I can put it right there, and and I'm and I'm actually just covering up that part that's useless anyway. It's too tiny. This is the part you'd be looking at. Okay, so uh, stop when not visible, restart when visible. Okay, uh, and that's kind of really meant to be about video usually, but then pause when not visible, unpause when visible. And then always play even when not visible. Now, I have left it on that for a long time because I thought it had to be to keep it working. Uh, I thought it would completely lose the stream, but it actually made it come back when I changed it to that. So... Uh, that is, that's how you get a, a, an audio stream. I'm using an app called IP Webcam on my phones. So I put in the IP address forward slash audio dot wave. That gets, picks up the audio. You can do audio and video both <clears throat> on the same, uh, let's see. No, you have to have two separate streams. But you can put them in the same sor uh, same profile. Let's see what scenes. Okay, you got scenes and you got sources. You can put, if I was to... Uh, Put another one in here, like I could say audio, a video cam three, and, and same address. It would just be, uh, let's see, well, that's a that's a USB. That's my camera that I'm using. I don't have any of the other ones turned on. But uh, the only difference would be it would say uh, forward slash video at the end, and then it would pick up the video stream from, uh, from uh, uh, the camera whatever whatever the IP address is uh, that app works really good and I'm sure there'd be others as long as it can uh, do an IP stream like that then it would it would could work in, in VLC <coughs> but it's the uh, the one that uh, I like the best that I've used I think it was the first one I tried in VL, uh, VLC in uh, <coughs> they call it a VLC stream <coughs> no, I think it's the first one First one that I uh, tried in o OBS Studio. That's the last one of those ricottas. These are actually good. I mean, they work well. Uh, and they taste okay. Um, these are cherry. I thought I only liked the lemon, but uh, that could they were always out of the cherry for a while. And uh, I mean, the lemon and so... Ended up getting the cherry, and I got to where I kind of like them. Yeah. You know, when I talk like this much, well, I've been started making these videos at this morning. What time was it? Nine twenty-eight. Now it's twelve. Well, it's twelve one twenty-seven. But I started this video at twelve thirteen. This is going to be a long video. Because I started getting sidetracked and talking. Now my throat's about to go be gone. I'll start coughing uncontrollably if I keep going. Well, if I hadn't took a cough drop. But um, yeah, see, like this scene has a screen capture. That's giving you the desktop view and the. 4K USB video, that is my camera that's going over the USB to the computer, and then I could, if it was working right, I could be getting, I can either get audio from from my uh, 
you know, my mic going through my mixer and my V-amp to the computer to that little USB sound cord in this case. That's why I'm having, uh, this is new to me. Uh, I've always been streaming on that Lenovo before I got this server and uh, kind of took my time about getting it set up. I've been using the server for months now, but so anyway, you've got that's the default for audio. It's, it's they just call it mic aux. So uh, they call it aux auxiliary. Aux is auxiliary abbreviation for auxiliary. That's the way. That's what's on every mixer that I've ever seen. Uh, be aux. There'd be aux inputs and outputs and recorders, tape decks, and stuff too. But um, it's, it stands for auxiliary. But um, anyway, but if you use a mixer, you can have as many channel, you know, as many different things coming through that mic aux as you you got on your you can want to put on your mixer and have what it'll accept. Like I could have, I've got a, uh, a, a this is SM58, sure SM58. Well, I've got a 57. I think I have two 57s. Anyway. I originally myself bought five SM58s back when I was doing sound. I used them for years, and then I ended up giving, keeping one. How did I do that? I gave them to, I gave them, the church I was going to had the worst mics, and I gave them to them. I don't know if I gave them four or all five of them now. But this one. I said, yeah, <clears throat> and then shortly after that, my buddy's dad died, who had, a, he, I've talk, talked about him a lot recently, he, uh, and so I got my Dynaco preamp, which is, <laughs> it needs work now, it, I can't use it anymore, that's where I got my patch bay, he built that, uh, I have a Dynaco amp out in the garage that needed repair, and I did repair it, but I didn't have a multimeter to set the, it, it needed, what did I, I needed to set some trim pots on of the new parts and it's been it's been buried up in the gro up under stuff in the garage for over 10 years now and i've had this multimeter i could do it if i could get it out so I, it's a for, real nice dynaco foreigner what app but the dynaco was were well not that was a kid amp he built it from a kit this preamp i think he just bought it because it doesn't look like it would be a kit <clears throat> i'm not sure could have been but it's rack mountable, so it's mounted in my rack. And uh, what else? I got some. Oh, real four track real to real recorder that I ended up letting get away. I put it in my buddy. I had a, another friend, different friend from the one I worked with, that was start trying to start up a recording studio. And he he was a kind of a beginner, but uh, he uh, anyway we put it in there. And instead of bringing it here, uh, well, what happened? We put it in there, and I was just gonna, you know, all both of us use it. But then <clears throat> it ended up staying in there. Well, <clears throat> we kind of quit hanging out, and it stayed in there. And then uh, I don't know what happened to it. He he, you know, quit doing that. It was renting a building. And uh, on a street, you know, busy street, and uh, I helped him set it all up. And uh, pretty cool. It was fun. Anyway, I really don't know what happened with it because he, well, he just quit answering my calls, and that's kind of what how it happened that way. He quit answering my calls, so I quit going over there, and then never had a fight or anything that I know of. He was like that though. He had done that a couple of other times, and you know, then all of a sudden, out of the blue, he would contact you again. But that was way back in the mid to late nineties. <laughs> anyway, I heard of him because my buddy that gave me that gear, they were actually friends before I met either. You know, the buddy that gave me the gear introduced me to that guy. But um, I don't see that original buddy anymore either, hardly. But. Uh, <clears throat> Anyway, um, 
and getting old and life move move you know life changes but um Okay, I'm going to turn on audio on Cam 3 one more time and see if it's still behind. This time I'm going to kill SM58 first. Okay, I'm going to turn on audio on Cam 3 one more time and see if it's still behind. This time I'm going to kill SM58 first. All right, check one. I can't, I know when I'm, a, a while ago I kept trying to talk, I kept talking and I didn't realize that it was like so far behind. It's so far behind. What it does, though, see, it's listening, and when it gets behind like that, it was it'll play what I was, what you already heard over the SM58. It'll play that again, and it really gets confusing if you leave them both on. I did that once. So yeah, I, I see now why it's like that. Doing that, it's because I've been, what did I say, five hours over five hours. It's just been running over the Wi-Fi, so. It's just a combination of the. Well, I didn't reboot the phone, and that might clear it up. But it's it's it's. I know from experience, it's a combination of the phones, RAM, and the cache getting full. It's just not able to clean it. You know. Uh, well, the, if the RAM starts hanging on to. Uh, when the RAM starts getting full on a on a computer, these phones are computers. This computer's a computer. You know. A router is a little computer too, and the routers do the same thing. The, the caches will get full, and it's not dumping it as fast as the data is coming in. The RAM is really small on a router, so when it it doesn't, I don't know how come they don't manage the you know the RAM better than that. But when you're doing audio and video streams over your Wi-Fi like that, it's a long time. I mean, five hours is a pretty long time to be doing a stream. Or on a device, I mean, if you, it's such low resources, you know. Um, so, I've read, years ago, I used to read a lot about the routers and how they worked and everything. And it's, I don't remember enough of it, but basically the two things I remember is cash getting full and you're not, not emptying out quick enough. And there's tweaks you can do sometimes. Like, I don't, I don't, I was, Planning on putting DDWRT on that router because it will work on it. When I bought it, I made sure I got one like that, but I haven't ever done it. I, I've only I, I my old uh, Linksys router on the old one that everybody loved to hack. I did put it on that one, but then the hardware started dying and it, it won't do more than like two megabits per second now. And it used to be 54 on the wireless and 100 on the wired. You know, one of the wired wired ports died. I have another router that I, what I need to do is get that thing all fixed up and use it for my surveillance cameras so that uh, they can't mess up my streaming because I love to do this. I've had a lot more trouble since I put those two five megapixel cameras up. I didn't know if it'd work at all, but it does work. And I set, I set this router, it will automatically reboot itself at four in the morning, but I don't know exactly why. Well, I can kind of, well, I do kind of understand. When you power down a computer, I've always, I've learned it every, I learned this way back in 1992. The first things I learned is it was always a debate about should you, it, some people thought if you run a computer all the time, it'll run better, it'll do better. And, so, and some people thought if you shut them down like every day, then, then they'll do better. Well, I found out if you shut them down every day, they'll do better because they'll, when you shut them down, they clean out the caches and they clean out the RAM, especially they clean out the RAM. They did that, all that stuff in the RAM is deleted. And then when you boot them back up, they're back to full use of their RAM and their cache is not all full. Uh, cache is just files saved on the drive. Uh, Windows cache files used to be a file you could read. Uh, I think they have them encrypted or something now, but uh, well, I don't remember. I haven't used Windows hardly at all since 2000. <clears throat> Linux doesn't do it exactly the same way and I haven't even had to learn all about it because it works so well but uh, Linux has always been much better at managing RAM 
and I guess it really does better at managing video memory. See, you got cache for video memory, you got cache for RAM, you've got your video. Uh, there's RAM and video cards, you know, and video GPUs. There's the GPU that does the video processing, but there's RAM in there too. And so, uh, routers, same thing, you know, just just everything's slightly different, you know. Like routers are embedded systems; you can't just uh, easily install software, but you can. You can what they call it is the flashing the ROM. It has a ROM chip, and it's only so big, and you can you can override it, and you can put different different software on it, different operating system on it, DDWRT. Is a, a good easy a good one that's easiest to do. That that just really their website. You, it, you put in your model number, they'll tell you which one to get. Because if you put the wrong one on there, the old they call it brick in your router. It's a brick now. They can be some. Most of them can be fixed. I found it over the years. But you're gonna have to be basically. You're gonna have to learn some electronics because you gotta know how to hook up the serial. You gotta. You're probably going to have to solder some wires on it and hook up a serial cable connection. and You may be able to use USB to serial and all that, but serial is the older protocol that they used before USB came out. But lots and lots of things still use the serial protocol, even if they have, sometimes they'll have a USB connector on there, but it's a serial protocol. So anyway, you got, there's a lot to learn, and I've tried to learn it. I've watched videos and used to I used to read a lot but I can't comprehend my read what I'm reading very well anymore you might be getting a clue the way I'm getting turned around uh, so I mostly watch videos but I've watched videos on electronics and software for years oddly enough I don't watch very many at all on Linux because well, that's what I do I've learned I've learned it since so I do it every day all day you know since 2005 I'm working with Linux so and I love Discover New. I, I basically, I guess I love downloading new programs because usually I just probably know how many hundreds of programs I've downloaded and installed. It's so easy to do in Linux, you know. You don't download a single app at a time. You go into the package manager and click click boxes, and then it'll automatically install it and, and all the dependencies. There's some there's things uh, on my old Fedora 14 system. It's not over there anymore. It's in the garage because the CPU fan holder broke <clears throat> I need to fix that uh, it has over 3500 applications on it now they're not all standalone applications there's probably around I'm gonna say 25 to 2700 standalone applications and then the rest is is dependencies things that make them work you know they're very small though uh, there's even OBS studio is not all that big on Linux you know you, you, to see a, a program that's 300 megabytes for Linux, it'd be, it'd be something like, it'd be like Adobe Premiere or not Adobe, uh, dang it, the one that I've been wanting to try. Can't think. Black Magic, I guess it's Black Magic, but anyway, but by the one made by Black Magic Design, it's got a different name, but, but OBS works so well. It does. Well, OBS is actually. We well, can do live editing, and that's, I like doing that anyway because I don't want to have to make a whole video and then go back and edit. I, I, I just I used to think I would want to make a living at editing, but I really don't like doing it anymore. I haven't for years. I always liked doing live shows. I liked recording and you know remixing audio and stuff, but it's such a chore. I don't like hearing myself. For sure, over and over and over and over to keep editing. And if you're editing music or you're editing yourself talking, you've got to listen to yourself a thousand times for six to eight hours to get all that, you know, edited the way you want it. And I don't like doing that. Once I'm done making the, once the show's over, the show's over, and that's cool, you know. It's going to be rougher, and it's going to have some mistakes in it, but, and of course with a video, it's going to be way longer than, it would if you edited it down, but I can't make myself. If I spent, you know, two to four to six hours making a video, uh, I just can't take everything out of it. I can't. I think, oh, that's good. That's important. You know, that's helpful. You know, um, or that's funny. And so, you know, 
I would go to edit a video and and I couldn't get it down to less than an hour unless it was already in an hour and I could get it down to maybe 30 minutes, you know, but if it was, if, you know, if I shot footage, what I used to do, like in 2009, I still, here's a crazy, perfect example. In 2009, I got real ambitious. I didn't have anything but USB webcams that I'm looking at on there right over there. And, uh, really, you know, really old at the time. One's 240 by whatever, and the other one would do 640 or 680 or whatever. One of them would do, the biggest it would do is 320 by whatever. I always forget the second number. <clears throat> so I hooked, I had several old computers, uh, desktops, and back then, I just went ahead and I think, yeah, I was running Linux, but on those machines, I still had like one had 98 and the other one had XP on it, I think. Might have been both 98. and uh, But anyway, I found programs. Well, I used VLC. On one of them, I used VLC to stream, to stream, but I didn't stream over the network. I just made a stream and then saved it, you know, on that computer. Never left that computer. And uh, hooked up a mic, but I used a wired because I didn't have anything way to do it wireless I didn't have any phones or anything back then and that's well I already had that cable but the cable that's it's about a 15 foot cable or something it's a good cable it still works maybe beginning to get a problem with the cable inside the sheathing but because I was using it just a couple of weeks ago out in the garage working on my dryer but I think it's actually this mic as long as I don't move this single lapel is fine if you're moving around it'll start crackling and, and then the audio will go away and then it'll come back and I tried to fix it once. I, I took it apart as much as I could without breaking it, and I couldn't find anything that seemed wrong with it. The last time it did that, I went and I did it. Uh, well, I plugged it in. I made it was one of the videos I uploaded the other day, and I plugged it in and wiggled the cable around, and it did it. So I caught it, you know. So I know it's right here on the on the head of the mic. It's probably where the giant where it comes out. You know, they'll they'll get stressed being bent. Finally, they'll break it. Uh, the wires will break until you only got one. Str I've seen one strand of wire left still connected. And when you move them around, they make that noise, that static, because they're connecting and disconnecting the other ones that are broke. And once that one breaks, and sometimes they're actually all broke, but the sheathing is holding it together until you pull on it, you know. So you got a connection most of the time, but then when you, it gets bent or pulled a little, comes loose <clears throat> yeah and then it disconnects it but you know most things you can fix fairly easy but these are so tiny i'm not even so sure if i could fix it or not i'll go ahead and try <clears throat> but anyway i recorded I, I didn't say the project okay so one of them i was i was recording with obs studio and uh, that was with the one that was 640 by 480 i think is what it is and then the other webcam it would only do, you know, 320 at the above uh, something. And so I set it up with a surveillance application on Windows 98. And uh, I had these these computers stacked with well, my workbench that I use all the time right here. I, it has wheels on it. I stacked them on it. I, well, I put them underneath, and then I put the a, a, a CRT monitor on top and rolled it out in the driveway, and I was doing wheel bearings started out doing wheel replacing the uh, driver's side wheel bearings on my blazer and then i ended up working on the tailgate and doing some welding on it because the window kept falling out and the, and the uh, carrier for the window was just all got all been out of shape and messed up and so oh, and some something that held it in there was broken off and so i welded it and so i ended up doing a seven day project audio uh, working on the truck and uh, an audio video project and i was so uh, worked so hard on it, uh, trying to do it the best I could. And of course, I knew the video wasn't going to be high quality, but I, I'm good at audio, so I made the audio decent. You know, well, all I had, uh, what I used was a, a, a headset mic. You know, it was a, had one speaker on one side and a little little boom mic, and it, I knew that I knew enough tricks, you know, to get decent sound. But I did wired. Uh, I didn't even want to try to do wireless because. 
Well, one thing, wire, you know, a wireless mic, even to this day, I mean, most of them last about an hour. Some of those really cheap ones, I think, last 20, 30 minutes before the batteries go down. And the better ones would probably last about two hours. Uh, I kind of used to look at them a lot, you know. But uh, I kind of stuck with wired until until I got my phones, and it was it was so easy to do that. It, I mean, I still don't like how they get the I'm talking about all the problems with it. The problems are worse now, like I said, with the those five megapixel cameras. I didn't ever finish the the router. I've got another router I need to work on. The, the antennas are about to break, and put DDWR2 on it, RT on it, and then run. Make that be the NVR for my uh, security cameras, and then just send. Either do it wired, wired or wireless, send it over to this router, and then it won't be handling all that. This router won't have to handle the work of the security cameras and my live streaming stuff, you know, my Wi-Fi stuff. But um, so back to that video project. Um, if I look at them, it helps me remember. <coughs> I, uh, I had 101 or two videos, what I ended up with. Worked real hard at naming them, you know, day one from so-and-so o'clock to so-and-so o'clock. And uh, so <clears throat> now this was the videos. Now then the uh, the Windows 98 machine with the smaller, the older webcam, even older than that one. That one was older. The 640 was old at that in 2009. It wasn't even, you know, everybody was doing 720p, <laughs> you know, um, by then. And uh, not everybody, but it was available and popular. Um, I, uh, I, I had, there was a surveillance program that would just take, it didn't take videos, it took, you know, still shots, JPEGs, uh, motion detection, on motion detection. So I had the VLC running that I, you know, I had to turn it on and turn it off. And then I had, uh, I had that lapel, not lapel, that headset mic, and I had uh, I had an SM58, and I had it uh, where I could plug it into the computer. And of course, it was really tricky to get. I didn't have, I did have this, but I keep saying I had this, but I didn't use it because I hadn't figured out how to make it work with the mic yet. It was so complicated. I was saying that earlier, so complicated to get get those change those settings. And I just every time I looked at that manual, it has a, a long. Old, you know, paper manual, a book. And every time I'd, I'd read a bunch of it, and then I didn't know what I just read, you know. And so, um, even though I had figured out how to use almost everything, in a lot, most of it, I didn't. There, there's some really in-depth stuff you can do with programming that thing that I never did try to do. But <clears throat> I did do it on the computer, though. Uh, this was all in like '02 when I first got it. O2, I think I don't know if I got it in one oh one or oh two. I think it might have been oh two, three, four, you know, like that. Uh, but in, I'm talking about 2009. I'm using gear older than this thing, and I could have had a lot better audio if I'd have used that. All I, only, you know, um, I, I, I kind of I don't even want to think about it. I just want to kick myself. You know, all the years I could have had when I did do a video on anything, I uh, could have had so so much better audio <coughs> by using that. I had kind of given up. I decided that it wouldn't actually do what I needed it to do, and I just relegated it to be a guitar effects. And I actually really never played with my guitar very often because I never got good at guitar. But um, um, so I had my hair. My thing. My my plan was I was trying to make a planned video project. You know, not just like what I'm doing now. I just get on here and start talking about one thing, and then get mixed up and talk about other things. <laughs> But, um, so, um, and I kept those videos separate, you know, and the still shots, I knew that I knew which one went with what and in the computer, I saved them in different folders and everything. And, you know, once I'd, uh, well, I usually, well, I didn't have super big hard drives on those things. So I would usually roll that thing in here and, uh, if they were getting full, you know, I would roll it in here for sure and copy all the files over to uh, my computer that had bigger bigger drive. My in, in my computer I was using at the time. I don't remember what I was using at the time. <clears throat> I don't know if it's that Pentium Four or that one point eight gigahertz. Uh, that was a Celeron, I think. Was it? Maybe it was a Pentium. 
But anyway. No, that was an that was an AM. Is that an AMD? I was watching back one of my videos the other this morning, and it was talking about. Oh, okay, that's a whole different machine. I had a two gigahertz AMD processor that I got, uh, and some RAM that I built. Yeah, I built a machine. But it wasn't a, a real good, fast processor. It was 2 gigahertz. But anyway, it uh, I didn't use it much. But I, I found one of my videos. It was in one of my very first OBS Studio test videos, and it was being done on that machine. And I was sitting there saying that it was a 2 gigahertz Athlon. I was like, what? Then I said the motherboard I was using, and I was like, oh, yeah, that is an Athlon motherboard. <coughs> Uh, that's what they were called back then, Athlon. Now I guess they just call them. Uh, now I was th that was throwing my mind, and I was, I was like, "What? That's not what they call them now. Well, they just call them AMD now." But anyway, it is a dual core AMD, two gigahertz, uh, and it's yeah. I took that that motherboard is right over here my, in my mother's machine, and I have eight. And I put an eight core processor in it and eight gig of RAM. And then there were some things that didn't work right, and I still haven't given it back to her, and it's been several years. I bought another motherboard, the one that will work right. I wasn't getting, I had it has onboard gigabit Ethernet, but it wasn't working, and I had to put a 100 megabit Ethernet card in it just to have Ethernet. And I, just, that wasn't, I just didn't think that would be good enough to give her that way because we have 200 megabit down, you know, Ethernet, Internet. And uh, anyway, but then time... Plots. <clears throat> and I still haven't got it pre-done. <clears throat> and uh, so anyway, back to the, uh, so I have this, oh, I didn't really say, those were Pentium 1 to 3s. I think they were Pentium, one was a Pentium 1 and the other was a Pentium 2. I don't think either one of them was a 3. Yeah, I'm pretty sure of that. Machines that have been given to me. And, uh, but I was running, like I said, running Windows on them. I wasn't running Linux on them. But that was an old nine. I could have been. I don't know why I didn't. I will. I, I, it's kind of funny. I love Linux and everything, but I hated to just like if I could do a boot one, I'd always do that. But if it didn't have a big enough hard drive to do both, I hated to just blow Windows off of it completely and it'd just not be used with Windows at all. And I still haven't completely let go of Windows. I guess now <clears throat> I've only got one Windows operating system that works. And that is in a virtual machine, Windows XP so, <clears throat> Pro, that original one I bought for that that Pentium 4. <coughs> that Pentium 4 don't have Windows on it. It's got a Linux, Fedora Linux on it. It's a little bit too new a one for that one. It doesn't run very good, but <coughs> I hardly ever turn it on anymore. I actually did some video editing on it the last time I used it. It took like 20, uh, two, two days, like two full days and nights to edit a video, like an hour-long video to render it, edit it, and cade it. The editing, it did fine for the editing part of it, but the rendering is what you know, really works. In. <clears throat> but the cool thing was it could do the video rendering, and I, I wasn't tied up and not able to use my machine because the machine I was using, yeah, I was using that Lenovo i5. But it was, that machine is loud and makes heat. I, I, I did it uh, at one time. And then that was the last big video I remember editing. <clears throat> so this is a video editing story still uh, and why I don't edit. So uh, th that's the one, that's the, my, my, was always my main reason, but I got to admit, I haven't had any desire. I can edit whatever I want now with this server, but I haven't had any desire to do so. <laughs> and that was one reason I got it. I thought, well, maybe I'll get back into editing, you know, but, uh, Actually, all I seem to be doing is just wanting to make a higher quality stream, you, see, you know, a 4K or, well, now I know I'm going to be doing, I guess that size I am set to is considered, I don't know if that's the bottom end of 4K or if that's considered 2K, but anyway, uh, I guess I'll find it. When, if, when I upload one of these, well, I already did, I guess I didn't pay any attention. If they, <clears throat> YouTube will say whether they think it's 4K or 2K or whatever. But uh, 
so my I can't even finish one story before I start ten more. Um, <clears throat> so I <clears throat> recorded all that video for a week. Got my wheel bearings in. I got my back window kind of fixed up, but I just need to buy all new parts. They're just so worn out. The window still just kept falling out, and uh, I didn't really. Well, I didn't have money to go buy an expensive stuff, you know, so I didn't. Uh, the There's this sticky, you know, it might be butyl tape. I didn't never ever know what it was. It was black and really sticky stuff, but it, it, it had gotten so, you know, the window had come off of it so many times, I guess it got all full of dirt and sand. Uh, it wasn't holding the window anymore, so I finally peeled it out. That time I peeled it out and put... I think I used clear, clear, yeah, I used clear silicone so that it wouldn't show up so much on the window because I knew someone would squeeze out. And I cut what I could up, you know, out of there once it dried. <coughs> but uh, it didn't hold for long. The window came right, <coughs> right out of there <coughs> at some point. So it's always just been now. It's not even in that bracket. It's just sitting on. Uh, it wouldn't stay in the where it cranks up and down anymore for years. <clears throat> this is my 76 Chevy Blazer I'm talking about. It has a crank up window in the back. It has a tailgate and then the window cranks up and down by a hand crank. Um, I've had trouble with that for over 20 years now. <laughs> I fixed it a hundred, always I had fixed it a hundred times and it still broke. But uh, <clears throat> I had to end up, uh, to keep the window up, I had to end up, I drilled holes through the outside to and the inside, but then I tapped the inside. Well, that wore out. So then I welded some, I just used quarter 20. And so I welded quarter 20 nuts in there and they're even worn out now. But so I have two pieces of all thread with handles on them. <laughs> One has an old window crank that uh, wasn't really, it works, but it, I don't know if it was out of that. It wasn't out of that blazer. It was, I don't know what it came out of. I have, it's an old window crank. And I, uh, I think I just drilled a hole all the way through it, and then bolt, yeah, I bolted that all thread through it. I needed all thread because the bolt I didn't have any bolts long enough to go, you know, that far, it's eight inches or whatever, all the way through. Um, so one of them is that, and and the window crank had uh, worn out and broken, and so I had. Uh, I replaced it. I did buy a new window crank. I cost 75 bucks from LMC truck. You can find those parts for those old vehicles, but they're expensive. And uh, I can find all that all that stuff to repair that is at LMC, but I think I'd be spending like 250 bucks or something. I never have done it. Well, I don't, my health is always, my health is my problem now with working on stuff, you know, I'm getting, not being able to do what I'd like to do. But, um, so the other side, the left side, the driver's side, it is the original old windows crank, and I put a piece of all thread in it. Got to, I, mean, I didn't throw it away when I got the new one. I got the new one and had the key, had it keyed and everything. It works perfectly, but it'll un, it'll fold up and fold down, you know. But and, but it's a good cranker, <laughs> and so I I've turned those all threads in in and out of that so many years that that. That nut, that quarter twenty nut that I, of course, when you heat them up, welding them, then makes them soft, so it didn't take long for it to strip off. So it just barely holds it in there now. And uh, originally, I just drilled a, a tap size hole on the end, on the end. first. I, you know, I drilled a smaller hole, bow all the way through, and then I drilled out the bigger one to well quarter inch. To, the alternate will go through quarter inch, and then the other one on the inside. It's like well, usually the right size is a number seven drill. I don't remember the size of it, but um, anyway, I originally tapped just the sheet metal, you know, of the, it's pretty thick, but it stripped out pretty, after a while, I don't remember what lasted longer, it or the, or the nut that I welded on there, but anyway, that's, those screw in, and then the window sets on top of that, now it used to be that that bracket that the window set in would set on top of now it's just a window <laughs> and I'm so worried that it'll, you know, there is a chip out of the window on one side where it must've got bounced or something, you know, cause when you're driving down the road, this is a four by four, uh, with now back when I bought that in 92. And in those days people made them stiffer. 
So it's got dual shocks on the front and pretty stiff shocks on the back. And those are good shocks all these years, and they haven't even shown a sign of wearing out. But you know, everybody wants flex, and they're like, you know, like that. But back then, they've stiffened them up. They jacked them up, raised them higher, of course, to get the bigger tires on them, which they do still. But they made them stiff. And those shocks only work when you're jump. Uh, they work. They do the good job, but you, you need to be going fast <laughs> to get those shocks to work. And they do beat you to death. <clears throat> but uh, so when you're going down the road, it's like riding a hay wagon, you know, and just. <clears throat> but I got used to it. I like it. <clears throat> now, I don't like it when you're off roading and you go too fast and hit, you know, hit some hard hole or something and it, <laughs> you feel that pain all the way through you spine. But I actually hadn't taken it four wheeling and I, last time I guess I've ever really taken it four wheeling was year it was after two thousand and nine. It, it's I don't know, five plus years ago we had a I've got pictures of it and everything. Now that's my <clears throat> picture my YouTube and all that that's a different picture of me in front of my blazer, and it's been, I animated it, made it look kind of different. <clears throat> but there's a picture of my next-door neighbor. To, I took him and his mom out driving in the snow. We had, And uh, we drove all around the country roads and made a big circle and came back. That's the last time I four, uh, that was really four-wheeling because, boy, with that ice and snow, <clears throat> you need good four-wheeling and good tires to get through it <clears throat> out here because it was not... Uh, yeah, the highway, I, well, they usually put sandy stuff. I guess it's got, I don't know, if, it doesn't have salt and it. it's got something else in it that helps melt the ice But on the main highways. But we were going down the roads that didn't have hardly any tracks on them whatsoever. Because we wanted to see it as pretty, you know. <clears throat> but um, And, of course, the places you get stuck are usually those places you least expect, you know. First thing I did is, let's see, why did we go there? We went down the, down the service road, and the police station is just like, if there were blocks, it would be like two or three blocks from me. And, and he used to live next door. He's moved. His parents still live there, but he moved <clears throat> and got a house up in there. He's still in this town, Hazel, but different, you know, in a neighborhood over a different place. And um, he got married, and that's when he, he had a girlfriend for lots of years, and then they finally got married, and that's when they bought a house. But... Uh, So, <clears throat> it's a four wheeler. It uh, and I used to always run thirty five inch mud train tires on it, but I got to where I had to buy used ones. I couldn't afford new ones, and so I have some thirty two inch. They're mud train tires too, but they're pretty well worn when I got them. Now they're really worn. well. Now they're all blowing out. They're so old now. There, there's. I've got three blowouts, and uh, the two front tires are still holding there, and the two backs are blown out. And the spare's blown out. And it, and it, I'm sitting on jack stands to keep it from, you know, sitting, <clears throat> wheels sitting on the ground. And I could actually buy tires now, but I haven't felt up to do, doing it, with dealing with it. You know? I really don't want to, well, I can't drive it anywhere I haven't put on. So I was thinking, well, I may just actually, I've been watching those online order places, you know, I can't think of tire rack. Uh, I I used to, well, I haven't in the last, this year so much, but I used to always watch all those. Uh, well, they went off. <clears throat> uh, I liked uh, Hot Rod Magazine was making some nice, really fun YouTube videos. Roadkill, they went commercial or something. I think they're on some cable channel or something. Got to, or, Well, you can pay on their website to watch it. But I'm not, there, I've got a lifetime of stuff to watch on the Internet. I'm already paying 70 Eight, almost eighty dollars a month for internet. Why well, am I going to pay them another t twenty to ten or twenty dollars a month to watch their shows? You know, they're not that good. Nobody shows that good, and uh, uh, nobody's paying me to watch mine. <laughs> Maybe because I'm not <laughs> don't make good shows, but <laughs> um. Anyway, uh. Well, well, I'm trying to say the one that, what's it called? Dirt Every Day. I used to like that a whole lot, too. But it's on, it's owned by, 
hot rod. But they did the same thing. They went commercial, strictly commercial. So uh, <clears throat> they, they'll they put on a little teaser every once in a while on YouTube. And sometimes it's like a five-minute teaser, and sometimes it's a whole episode, but it's like five years old now or something. I mean, it's been a pretty long time now since when they used to be on YouTube. <clears throat> but uh, Jay Leno puts his episodes on, the, and I, lo- I really like I never knew. I, I never watched much of John, Johnny Carson. I never watched Johnny Carson when Jay Leno was on there. I, I liked Johnny Carson. I grew up with him. But um, I didn't dislike him, but I just didn't, well, I wasn't in, into watching talk shows any, that much any, really anymore. The only ones I was ever really enjoyed watching was Johnny Carson. Used to watch it. My grand, my mama watched it every night before bed, and kind of, sometimes I would do that too, you know, at home. But uh, <clears throat> um, anyway. The blazer. So I, my video, I made videos and and just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of automatic, you know, move, uh, still still shots, JPEGs. They were in JPEG, still shots done by motion, you know. And what I was gonna do? Okay, you see how I've got two, two deals up here. I've always just kind of like I, I I thought it was I was so intriguing, and you <laughs> you may never never guess where. You would never guess, I don't think, where I got it. When I was growing up, one of my favorite shows was The Brady Bunch. And uh, I just enjoyed the show and the kids. And they were my age. <clears throat> and, of course, I was in love. I couldn't decide who I liked more, Marsha or Jan. You know, they were both just prettiest girls. And <clears throat> um, But, you know, it started out with that multiple video frames of all of them, you know, and they used to like come in one at a time. At, at one point, at earlier days, it was kind of better because they, they like came in, you know, they, they did, uh, uh, as they would start singing their little theme song, they would, each one would come in, you know, and, and you'd see them and it was cute as it could be. And I just thought that was the neatest thing. And then not too many years ago, uh, the show 24, one of my favorite shows at the time, uh, with uh, Kiefer Sutherland, you know, he was a, uh, what they call it? They called it a different name, but he was like a CIA or FBI agent, you know, and uh, <clears throat> always catching the bad guys, you know. And they would actually use it in. I always thought, what would it be like to do that? I had only seen very short pieces. They used to only use very short clips like that. Even some movies in the 60s and 70s would do that once in a while. It was usually some like super cool movie, you know, where it never got super popular, but it was really cool dudes in the movie and the, you know, I can't think of one of them, but, uh, and of course it was always like in the, you know, the intros to movies or show, uh, the intros to movies would do that quite a bit, you know, 007, I think did that some, but, uh, I thought, well, what, if, you know, what about making it like, part of the story and 24 did a real good job of it they would show what jack was doing in one square usually they did sometimes they, they didn't do too many because you know once you get past two it, well three don't fit on the screen good and if you get past two and of course yeah back 24 yeah that was still 4.3 i don't think it was 16 right i don't even know what 16 by nine yeah i think it's 16 by nine <clears throat> anyway I don't remember. They made it fit on the screen good. It seems like they didn't usually just do two. They do three, maybe four, or they do. Anyway, I, I'm going crazy here. All right. So anyway, they would show what Jack. You know, it'd be a real tense moment, and they'd show what Jack was doing. But you know, you know, you're wondering what's going on with the other, because he always had multiple storylines going on. Well, what was cool with 24? They didn't have like totally separate storylines. It was all tied together. I didn't ever care for. Those shows where you got four different main characters, and they're showing and they're pouncing back and forth between the, the different characters, and you're just like, well, "What the heck's going on in the story now?" You know. And I was always good at what, vis, visual watching, listening, and learning. You know, I was used, I was always good at. It. Now, as I got older, I kind of get a little more trouble with doing that, but <clears throat> um, they just weren't too good at the carrying 
you know, four storylines and, and keeping it together, keeping it telling us a straight story uh, when they tried to do that sometimes. But anyway, 24, when they didn't uh, bounce back and forth so much, they did, well, I mean, they did switch, but they didn't, what I would consider bouncing back and forth to where you just don't know what the heck's going on. You know, they always would go between Jack and what he's doing and what Chloe's doing on the computer trying to, you know, trying to stop the hackers or to hack somebody to get him the information he needed. And <clears throat> so anyway, they would use the multiple uh, view. I can't even think the right word. They would use the multiple view in the in the show. <clears throat> They'd show him doing, he'd be doing what, he'd be continuing doing the, whatever it was he was doing and then somebody else would be doing this. And then, it, like I said, three or four, usually it was, a lot of times I think it was two. When he got to four, it's a little hard to, because your eye, you only got two eyes, so you can't, I can kind of split. Like if I try, I can see those two at once and I can kind of see what's going on, you know. But you're always going to be drawn to one side or the other. So you got to, so you don't, I, like me, I don't try to do more than two. I don't want to do more than two. You, and, and you can't, in, in this uh, 1080, well, it doesn't matter if it's 1080 or 4K, you still got the, I guess it's 16 by 9, they call it. You still got the same space. So if I put four in here, they would get, they'd still be really wide. Each piece, you can see how wide they are now. But they would have to get narrower and and it would be all out of shape. So then if you're going to, you, you don't want to, like I resize these to fit together. You don't want to get them out of shape. You never want to do that. That looks terrible. So then your only other choice would be to, uh, well, in OBS, you can let them hang out, uh, hang off the sides of the palette, and then they're just not seen. You know, uh, Since I'm doing this desktop view, I think you can see, yeah, you can see my mouse over there. Yeah. You can see, oh, I, Pay attention. You could see it in this view, but in the uh, if I'm not showing you the OBS Studio window, then you won't see it. If I had something hanging off, I don't. I, I redid it the other day, and I don't have anything at all. I don't think hanging off. Maybe one, and I don't know which one it would be. And of course, I don't have but one camera running right now anyway. But when I originally set this up for uh, this camera, along with my phones. The phones fit perfectly. Uh, they were at 720p. That's all I could stream over the Wi-Fi. And then I could set them side by side with the desktop. Like this is right here. And the phones would fit perfectly. And you wouldn't have so much of black bars at the top and bottom. You could have the, uh, well, you could only go so far. Basically, you, you get your desktop to go to the middle. And then whatever, however high it is, that's that's it. And, uh, <clears throat> and then the... Uh, phones they well you could make it a little past the middle and the phones would still fit in the remaining space because they weren't they're 720 they're not as wide you know so uh but anyway uh it is it's just, uh with them they it they did they made it enhance the story there was very few times where there was too much going on there was some where it was too much going on and i, I, I would which one do i look at which one do i look at or what happened over there i missed it you know that, that will happen if it's action, but uh, I noticed when I watch back my own videos, like uh, one of my favorite videos I did like this is I had the uh, endoscope, the close-up camera on one side, and on the other side I had a over-the-head view, straight-down view of me putting that, uh, that AS Rock motherboard. I didn't say the name of it, the brand of it a while ago. I was putting it in... This machine right here, the one that I was talking about a minute ago, that's my mom's. <clears throat> and I had it on my workbench. <clears throat> and it worked out really well. I, it took me a little over an hour to do it start to finish. So it's a nice little nice little video start to finish of in, set, installing that motherboard, that 8-core processor. And I think that is the video that I get the most comments on of, and questions. Uh, I get a lot of questions. I don't just get comments. I get questions like, hey, Will this work? You know, how can I do that? Because <laughs> they think because you did that, you must know everything about those things. Of course, I know what I learned. During, during the, well, I've owned that motherboard a while, but I'll, I've used it with two different processors. So the eight core and the dual core. That's what's cool about that motherboard. That's why people are interested in it because 
you can put anything from a two, dual core to an eight core in it. Um, it ha it will handle DDR2 and DDR3 RAM, or is it? Yeah, two and three. <clears throat> so I originally built it. <coughs> Actually, there's been three. No, not that much work. <coughs> uh, um, first time I built it with the dual core, I had DDR2 in it. Next time, I had, and it was like, I don't know what I had, two gig of RAM or three or four. It was either two or four gig. I think it was two. <clears throat> and then when I built it, rebuilt it with, um, then I rebuilt it again and put it in this box, different box, eight core processor, the AMD 8300, which I did a lot of research because it's not one of the listed processors. It says it'll work with it, but it will, but not everything works right. And I believe that is because that processor is just, it wasn't made yet, wasn't invented yet when that board was made. So it's just too new for it. <clears throat> it runs just great, but it, it, it did not, I, I put OBS on it and thought it would just do great, but it, it whacks out. And I found out that it's actually OBS just didn't, hasn't, fo or at that time, had several years ago now, hadn't focused on the AMD processor compatibility. And that was issues with that. <clears throat> so it wasn't anything to do with my motherboard. At first I thought it's because of that motherboard. But I bought on it. Where is it? I've got a brand new Azus motherboard. I've set it somewhere now. It's not over there where I had it. That is known to work well with that process. And I have eight gig of RAM, which is plenty for mom. <clears throat> um, so anyway, <clears throat> I guess I never, I, I never, <laughs> I keep getting off on everything that enters my mind. Um, Back to the, the what I consider the original story of the last hour here. Um, so I made all the video of working on my blazer, you know, the wheel bearings and the <coughs> tailgate repairs. So I made them, I, I kept them two separate, like, episodes. or Well, we're going to be two separate videos, you know. And... Uh, <coughs> Actually, I thought I might break them up since there were so many days of footage. I thought I'd break them up and to see, make a series, two separate series. And I was going to, and that's why I was talking about this. Okay. So my, I had done this once before where I, my TRS-80, can't see it right now. When I first got it, I made a video of it, booting it up and getting it going and stuff. And I had a, web, I had a webcam up in the corner. And I was using the, this is before I discovered OBS, I think. I was using some other program. But uh, <clears throat> I had me and just my head in the webcam up in the corner. That was kind of popular at the time. And uh, <clears throat> then I had, uh, I had it was wide enough. I, 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 I'm guessing I was using, those are really small resolution, you know, like 640 and 320. Uh, so one of them was my headshot, I guess the 320. And then the 640 was, yeah, it was the, the video of the, me working on the computer. So I still had all this extra space that I could fill in to, to get the width, you know. I was still going to have black bars at the top and the bottom, but not, not as much as this. But uh, <clears throat> um, so I set my palette. When I, this is a video I ed actually edited on K, in KDN Live, my favorite video editor. Uh, so, so far anyway, um, and it's all free and open source program, just like OBS is, but it's a, it's just for editing. <clears throat> yeah. Well, actually you can live stream with it, but it used too many resources and I never could do it. But, um, um, not, not, I could probably do it now, but I'm, I really, OBS beats everything I've ever tried, <clears throat> but, uh, it doesn't have all the features that OBS does. I don't think, well, it could have, it's probably got more than I think. I think it'll do desktop and camera, but anyway. Um, so I, I had, uh, so I did what I was talking about. I had uh, the other camera on another computer. Well, see, these are just USB webcams. So one was going to one computer. The other one was going to another computer. 
and I'm not streaming. I'm just recording video. And so, uh, <clears throat> these, uh, Hmm. How did I do that? Or maybe I did it with my actual camera. Oh, that's what I did. Okay, this time it was different than with the blazer. This is after I actually made all the blazer footage, but I actually did it on this this one and added. I actually it turns out I thought I'd edited two videos. I kept trying to find the other one. Well, I finally figured out all I have is the original footage, no edit. So I edited one that was an hour, about an hour long. It, and I uploaded it, <clears throat> and then the second one I didn't. <laughs> it's the rest of the story. I have still haven't done it, um, but uh, I had bunches of pictures that I had taken. You know, twenty five, thirty five pictures, uh, still shots that I had taken of it as it as I was taking it apart. Uh, see, I ended up having to take it apart because one of the, oh the processor yeah it was a processor. It, it had fallen out. Uh, a really cool guy gave me this and just for free and shipped it to me and a whole box of manuals and how and instruction and programming, how to program videos. I mean, what books. He sent me all that stuff. It's so cool. And uh, I just happened to find it, a post. He said he had one he would give away. And I thought, oh, that'd be so cool. I always wished, wished, kind of wished I'd have got one. I looked at them in 1983 when they were brand new, and I decided not to. They were like 800 bucks. Well, it was 500 for the base model, 800 for the. Uh, I think th this is a portable. This is a P, uh, P3 portable, and I looked at those, but I, I kind of was leaning towards the ones that you plug into the TV, so they were they were 500 bucks. And <clears throat> but anyway, I decided not to. I had the money at the time. I had working at GD making good money. But I didn't want to spend that kind of money on something I wasn't sure if me or the kids would, my three kids, two girls and a boy, if they would uh, really get into it. And uh, so I ended up just not doing it and buying them. Other, I don't remember what I bought that. <clears throat> but uh, um, it's still just you know well to this day i remember that and i'm, I'm not, i don't care now because i got give you know i got this one and that's the way things have gone i haven't messed with it very much it's been a couple of it's probably been a year since i've had it on you know but 1983 still works anyway the pro if they're in the bouncing around in the shipping the processor it's just a plug-in and it and it just uh it's a dent it's it it, it it had bounced out of there and I think the reason was is because it had I don't, I don't want to call it a bodge because it was a it was a hack um, a real hack um, they had made it faster somebody before I think before he even got it had made it faster by I forgot what they did to it but it, oh yeah it was plugged into something I don't remember what it was now I used to even know what it was called but, Okay, so you plug this into the socket, and then you plug the processor into it, and it brought the megahertz up quite a bit. It was pretty cool. And there was also a, a, a they call it usually the, the, the electronics guys I watch, they call that a bodge when you hook a wire to a pin and then go over here and hook it to another pin somewhere else or, you know, or another trace on the circuit board or whatever. <laughs> that's, that's part of what made it work. Um, I think there was two wires that were bodged on there, but... Uh, I uh, anyway, it had just fell out, and all I had to do is put it back in there. But I had pictures of it, um, and the video. I don't. I think I'd already fixed. Yeah, no, I might have. That might be in the video of me doing that. I don't remember. But anyway, so one side is a live video, or the, not a live video, but a video. It was live when I did it. The video was on one side. Like over here is a video. Uh, over here to the right was a slideshow of all those pictures. I, I wanted to time them to, to match what I was actually doing in the video. It's just more than I could fathom doing. I, I mean, you can, I didn't know of any automated way to do it, and uh, I would have to manually do it, you know. Like, okay, what's here? Now put that picture here. Make it stay 10 seconds. Okay, now this picture stays 15 seconds to make it time out right. This picture says three seconds. This picture, you know, I just wasn't, I couldn't do it. <laughs> People have done it, but I just couldn't, I can't, I'm, I can't do things that tedious. So, and then of course I had my, my cute little head, just my head shot. 
in the corner. I think it stayed up in the top right corner. And uh, so you could see my mouth moving. And what I did was uh, one of the, uh, I can't remember. I think the one, I think the way it turned out, the only way I could really do it because of the co computer, computer processing power and all that, the, I didn't have, I didn't try to record any audio on the one that was just a headshot because um, it couldn't handle it. And then the one that, uh, <clears throat> or maybe it was that one that did have the audio. But anyway, one had audio and video and the other one didn't. So when I edited, I, it, you, you can manually line them up and then as long, and then as long as, uh, here's the thing, I would see like one, two, three, go, and I'd start both of them at the same time. So they weren't too far off, but I was really, when I was editing, I was a stickler on getting that. I'd watch my mouth move, and, and I'd play it back over and over and over and keep dragging those thing files, you know, those sources back and forth till I got that synced as best as I possibly could. And now the one I edited, I did do that. So that kind of stuff is what I was going to do. This is five, eight years later than the 2009 two, uh, seven-day video I shot of me working on my blazer. So I had all those plans for it. I was going to put, uh, and originally I was going to have the video and since it wasn't a high resolution camera and you, and I couldn't, uh, you know, well with VLC, I was doing that VLC stream and save. You couldn't zoom in and out anyway. You know, there wasn't any way to do that. And with some webcam apps, you can do things like that, but, but it just gets so grainy. You can't see what it is. So you don't want to, but, uh, and then the other one was doing still shots by, by motion detection. So I was going to try to use the time. Uh, I, I think I, I had the file name automatically save the time, and the date and the time that it was taken. So I was going to try to do that. I was going to try to put still shots that correlated with the video you were seeing. So whenever I'm... Uh, and I had it in a little bit different angle, so like if I blocked a view, it would maybe see it, you know, uh, or the other way around. But <clears throat> I was going to try to, I was going to do the real deal, you know. I was going to make those still shots match the, uh, the video, and like one on the right, one on the left. And uh, I just, it sat around for years, and I never, just never could bring myself to do that much editing. So finally, uh, uh, it's over 100. I think I'm going to say it's 101 videos. Finally, I just went ahead and just uploaded all the raw videos to YouTube. Well, what, would they change? You know, you used to could only have 10 minute videos. I was going to edit them in the 10 minute videos, all of them, you know. And I'm probably trying to take out some stuff that was, well, like when I would have to go back to the garage to get some tools and stuff and then come back, you could hear me, but you couldn't see me. Sometimes I would talk, sometimes I wouldn't. I, I didn't try to keep talking and say what I'm doing much be, at first anyway because I thought, well, this is not going to be in the video. So I would just say, I'll be back in a minute, and I would just wouldn't. I thought, well, it's kind of silly to talk about stuff you can't see. Later, I got, you know, when you get used to just talking like you think there's somebody there, then I just got to where I was just talking all the time. I'd forget I wasn't even on the camera. And it actually, I realized later, well, that's actually better but when you're off camera, the only thing you do have is the talking to hold any interest or to tell what's going on or to make it not seem like forever, you know, like, oh, talk, talk about what you pick. Well, what, where is it? I can't find it. Or here it is. Oh, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, <coughs> um, anyway, I just uploaded all the raw footage and I made a fatal mistake when I uploaded. I don't know why I did it. I knew better. But back then, you could upload. Um, let's see, did I transfer those? What I, did I straight upload those or did I transfer them? I can't remember now. Either I uploaded them and, I could, and they'd let you upload multiple videos at a time, like about as many as you want. And uh, so I'd just set it to upload, you know, and then go to bed or something. But uh, there's another way I was doing a bunch of those videos. I'm starting to think, you know, Google Photos came out several years ago. Uh, and, I, and I just thought well, that's going to be helpful, you know, so a good way to back up your, your videos. 
uh, in case anything goes wrong with it. I have backups. I try to keep double copies of everything I can, but um, at least, you know. But uh, actually, so anyway, I may have just, I remember I went to uploading. I would set, uh, how did I do that? Well, everything I could, everything I took on my phones, I already had the phones, those three Alcatel phones. Every video, every, th every time I had videos on the phones, I would try to always make it sure and leave them on and turn. That stupid Google Photos app was just so buggy, man. It it, uh, it really is. It just, uh, it's buggy. It would, uh, or, or it's the Android operating system. It could be the one, I guess. <clears throat> but uh, sometimes... It would send, you know, it's supposed to see that you get new videos. You tell it to watch these folders, and if the phone's running, it should just upload them because I always made sure it was running in the background so it could do that. It would work and not work, work and not work, and it got to where over the years that I had to open up Google Photos. Usually after a minute or two, it would start uploading them. Sometimes it wouldn't, and I'd have to manually click upload and then leave that thing running usually sometimes you could minimize it sometimes if you minimize it it would quit a lot of times to make sure it was going to do it i would leave it open and you know and put it to side and let it sit there running and um, and it would upload everything in there <clears throat> so but before that i think i had google photos a year or two more before i got those phones i believe but anyway i remember how did i do that okay i had a windows machine windows 7 machine one of those machines, I think it was that dual, yeah, that dual core processor that I had put, what did I put it in? Oh, is, I put it in that AS Rock motherboard for a while. It was a machine that um, had got hit by lightning and the motherboard was fried, but the processor and RAM worked and stuff. And I ended up, well, my, my, my old neighbor, Jeff, he brought it to me to look at and see if I could fix it and tell the lady what was wrong with it. And I told her, she said, well, I got insurance. I'm just going to get a new computer. And so I kept that. I charged her 35 bucks, I think, or something for the labor, you know, instead of like 65 or whatever. Uh, that's cheap. At the time, <clears throat> uh, everybody, uh, Best Buy and Staples was charging $100 just to, just to blink at your computer. Just to look at it, diagnose it, uh, or one virus scan, which will never clean a, a dirty computer, just one scan. There's nothing that could ever do that. I would scan them. When I did that for, for somebody, I would scan them until, uh, it, generally you could get it done in three different, and I used three different scanners. The last time I did it on my own, that Windows 7 machine, uh, somehow I got, a, uh, I guess, evidently some kind of network crawling virus. Uh, I think I know what, what it, where it was. I was play. I was opening up uh, webcam software that I had downloaded over the years and trying it out because I was wanting something to do something with. And I was not. I didn't scan all the folders first because I thought, well, I've scanned those these drives before. You know, it'll be all right. Well, it wasn't all right. Something I know something hit a vast went boom, you know, and then in a few it was like a few days to a week before I noticed it, but every Windows machine I had was infected and messed up. Wouldn't even run good. It was bad. And I just got so I scanned that machine, that Windows seven machine, ten times with ten different rescue systems. Uh, some of them ran on Linux, some of them actually ran on uh, Windows of some sort, and finally after ten times it finally it didn't come up with anything on that last time. I would got once you get so far, you're like, I'm not giving up till I win, you know. And then after that, I still didn't trust it, and it bro and it broke it, and I had to repair the operating system, and I had it back going again, and not showing to have any more viruses. But I thought, oh, it may have one in the in the bootloader or something, and it'll come back, you know. And I thought, there's no way, there's nothing to. Well, there's one thing. What's it called? There's one app that can scan your bootloader. But it's really kind of complicated to understand how to use it and to clean it out. Uh, the only good thing I've ever seen to do is just use a I like G Parted. You know, there's other apps and Test Disk and other some other stuff I learned that ran on you know floppy disk Windows uh, DOS floppy disk I learned before that. But rewrite your boot sector, and uh, that's the best chance you got. Now if it's something really bad. Uh, then it's liable. it still could, could 
could still come back. There's ways it can be done. And of course, the BIOS. Uh, never. I don't know that I ever actually got. Well, I could have got something in the BIOS and didn't know it, but uh, never had anything that I that I remember. <clears throat> so anyway, <clears throat> um, that machine that I'm off telling them a different story about it. I would turn it on the Windows Seven setup that I made had set up, it, and it would run the Google uh, Photos uploader, and uh, that. And uh, I would just leave it running as, as long as I could stand to have it running. Sometimes I would go to bed with it running, or sometimes I would just have it running while I was on the computer, on my other computer. <clears throat> and uh, I would, I had, I used to use network. I was really big into networking all my systems. And that kind of slowed me down on it right there, that network virus. But uh, yeah, and the thing is, is that over the years, you know, there was more and more reports of malware that could hurt Linux, and I. I've been really blessed in it. Well, I try to be careful, but not have got my Linux. Only one time that I have, it was it was malware, I think. But anyway, uh, one time it, it it broke my file system, and well, I broke it. I I, I saw this thing uh, doing something crazy on my screen on a Linux system, and I just well, I wasn't too scared at first. Somebody sent me a link on MySpace, and it was supposed to be some sort of animation or something. And it locked up my computer, and I and I waited a little while, and then I got pissed off, and I just hard shut it down. Well, that that's what broke the file system, and I could not figure out how to fix it, so I ended up having to reform it. I got back into it. I saved all my files. I didn't lose any files, but I had to re I had to reform it. It's the only time I had some kind of malware thing damage a Linux system, but there's plenty of them now that can. Uh, and you might have malware and not know what you know, depending on what it's doing, what it's made to do. It might not show itself. It might be some sort of uh, bot, you know, software that's running some little server. Well, I, I monitor all that because I, I, I run a server of my own, so. Uh, and I generally look. Well, see, uh, one thing that's great about uh, Fedora Linux, and that's the main reason I haven't had a lot of trouble. Fedora has always had. SE Linux, security Linux. Anything that seems out of the ordinary, it will stop it and then pop up a thing that tells you. So it's the best security software system I've ever seen. It doesn't just go by virus def it doesn't use virus definitions. It knows what your system should be doing and what it shouldn't be doing. And if anything seems out of ordinary, it stops it first before it can do anything. That's what protects you in that's what protects you in Fedora. Now, Debane doesn't have that. Uh, there is, and I have always used Clam AV. Uh, it's the only really good. There, actually, a vast enterprise used to have one that would run on Lynx, but they gave up on it. I guess they didn't get much interest or support. You know, like people wanting to join the project. It was a, you know, project where people that program could join it. And all that coders, <clears throat> but. Um, Anyway, and it didn't work really well when anything like is good. It was kind of buggy. It was new, and it didn't work very well. So and there was one other one, but it's not around anymore. So Clam AV is the only one I know of that you can just go into your package manager and install it. And I do use it. I use to scan backup drives, and I'll scan my Linux systems every once in a while. Or if something seems odd and I think there's a problem, I'll scan it. And, uh, but you really have to be hands-on with it. You've got to know and understand your Linux system and what what really is malware and what isn't, you know, because it's a kind of arrows on the side of safety. Uh, but it also could break your system if you if you tell it just delete all that stuff. You need to see what it is. Like encrypted zip files, it treats them as malware, but they're usually not, you know. They can be, but if you know what, you know what files are on your system and what should be there and all that stuff. And you also know if you're on the Fedora and you know that SC Linux hasn't popped off anything, then yeah, you'll, you can figure it all out. But anyway, it, uh, it's, it's helpful, though, to scan, like, backups of Windows executables and stuff like that. The only thing about that is, you, you know, you really need to scan them with more than one thing. So, uh, <clears throat> It's, so it's uh, so you're going to end up having to use a window, either a rescue system or a window system, to scan more than one different type of scan. 
Um, I can't understand why I got back off into some other story. Did I finish? Did I finally finish talking about the the the, the video series that never was? <laughs> um, but yeah, the, so I still carry on and and I use you know BS. I do that that concept, um, and it helps a little good. Like I said, I was going to have all that fancy editing. I never just couldn't. Uh, I uploaded all those videos. I didn't finish that story. I got turned off rabbit trail okay so i uploaded and i still can't remember uh if uh so oh, uh google photos i may have uploaded them I, I think this is what i did i'm pretty sure now okay i had them already i just kept working on all my videos until i got all of them i could it was kind of funky. It didn't, it would go down, you know, it would recurse so many folders, but not like if you had four or five, it wouldn't go that far and stuff. It was all kinds of, it was a pain in the butt. I think it, they finally made it recurse, you know, at least like 10 fold, subfolders or something. But because, you know, the way I had my videos all backed up, it was like videos. And then there was all these subfolders. Sometimes it was, and then because of maybe the programs I use, they may have done that. Like if I did a conversion, you know, like changing it from a FLV to an MP4 or something, it would put another folder inside of that folder. And, and you could get four, four deep pretty quick, you know, without even trying. So anyway, I got everything. I got all those uploaded and everything that I could upload, uploaded. And one thing about that is it didn't tell you the ones that skipped or why it skipped them. So there was a lot of them got skipped in. I would just figure it out later, you know, by accident. Uh, like, what happened to that video? Why isn't it on here, you know? And then I would go find it in its original place, but it, no, sure enough, it wasn't uploaded. Then I found out it didn't support that format. And I had like a hundred some odd videos. I remember that. Oh, AUG videos. It wouldn't. Google, they're the ones that push the AUG Theora, the Vorbis, AUG Vorbis, the Theora coding. The best thing in the world is going to take over and then. Google Photos don't support it. <laughs> so uh, I had a hundred some odd videos that I did in desktop. When I was doing desktop videos with, uh, I think it was GTK, record my desktop, or certainly record my desktop. And I used the GTK GUI front end. Um, uh, I used it for a while because it's. they said it was so good, and it's, it, it, but it didn't stream good. It used too many resources compared to just doing an MP4 or uh, an MP4. Back, you, MP, MP4 used to be the earlier versions of it were not resource intensive. Now it is, but it's good quality video. That's what I'm doing right now, MP4, and saving as the MKV uh, container, I guess you'd say. Uh, there's, there's the video codec. There's the transport stream when you're streaming and then there's the container uh, which would be the MKV let's see yeah video codec mp4 container MKV the transport stream well some of them can be a transport stream and a, uh, what I just said which I believe MKV can but like one of them that's uh, real common is TS but it will not if you save a TS TS stream it will not save as a TS well I think you can do that but you don't want to do that you want to save it as an, uh, whatever the codec is find out what the codec is like I was showing in OBS a while ago I mean VLC save it as that when you want to save it <clears throat> but anyway yeah you can save it but it won't be a, a video a video it won't uh, it won't work that's what it is uh, there's TS and quite a few others but anyway um, so I uploaded them all to Google Photos, and then later, you know, once I got all that done, I thought, uh, I thought, okay, I'm never going to edit these things. I don't think I want to put them on YouTube. So they have, have, I guess they still have the feature, but they had a feature. Cool thing about that was they were very low resolution, so there wasn't any resolution knocked off of them or anything. And so uh, I used the like wizard, you know, or whatever they had to. Can you, oh. I guess it's still there. Um, you go uh, 
close that. I have a feeling I'm never going to do it. Even though I eat now that I've gone this long, just jabbering, I'm going to be too tired to make a live stream. Well, at least if I know everything works, this was just a test video. I was just going to make sure the mics work and everything before I did my actual stream. That my my wife, well, it doesn't work. My wife, I'm like, well, I was working for hours, quit working because I went too long. <clears throat> okay, so uh, like I say, I'm just, when I want to do anything to do with like uploading, I just usually just, I have these links I have in my toolbar up there. Used to, I would, I didn't, they took up too much space on my smaller monitor and I'd always, you know, make them disappear and then bring them back. But now I can just leave them up there. So yeah, that's the other, the last video I uploaded. I guess I'm going to upload these from today now because it's all to do with the same thing as what these were, but I had 10, 10 of them that I uploaded yesterday. Got them all uh, published. And they make you publish them all one at a time now. You, used to, you could just say upload and publish. It's ridiculous. So, uh, looks like I got one view on two of them, three of them. Hmm, I, wonder, I don't, sometimes it, I guess, I don't know if it still does that, but it used to count my views. And so, uh, I don't know if it, well, I could have went and just clicked on it and watched it. It might be me. But, uh, um, so, yeah, so if we were going to, no, it says upload video. Oh, wait, upload videos or go live. It used to say transfer from, no, nope, they're not doing that anymore. Unless there's another, another got to go around another back door to get to it. Maybe you can do it from photos, but you used to just click up in that area and say transfer. You had more than one choice, you know, you could upload or you could uh, do the camera, you know, the, do a live stream with your camera. It used to say, I didn't say go live. Go live used to just be for streaming with an app. But anyway, you could uh, pick. Transfer from Google Photos. Oh, that the whiteness on that screen is just like it's just completely well. It's not. That's right. I'm not going to be bleached out because I have colors fixed. And uh, oh, but it sure made a lot of difference, didn't it? It's like somebody put a spotlight on me. So uh, now I'm curious. Go to photos. Get rid of this extra stuff here. Clothes. If you try to click on something too early, it won't work. Well, I think it's it's this mouse, I think. This is that mouse that I don't like. What in the world? Oh, it still hasn't. Okay. There you go. Oh, it wouldn't close. No, it's behind. Why is it behind? I guess, let's see if this thing's working hard. I've been humming along. This this is one of the very few times I've ever seen this thing. Uh, I mean, thirteen percent of CPU. Okay, how much memory? Looks like it's about three gigabyte. That's what it does when I'm streaming this. Uh, oh, there we go. So I got sixty-two point nine of actually you know, usable memory out of that sixty-four. So it's 2.4 gigabytes of RAM being used in it by OBS. <clears throat> now, see, this is the most I have ever seen this thing work. It normally just hardly even shows any usage at all. But it's still humming right along. Now, it, as you can see, even when you've got this kind of uh, power, you can still slow a machine down. <laughs> you got... Uh, Unless there's something going wrong with, there's something going wrong with, I don't know, it's because I hurried up, clicked too many things. It will not close anything. For a minute, I thought it was because I was trying to close the one that wasn't in view, but you can do that. I do it all the time. But see, I'm clicking the different tabs, and it's taking a while to get to it. It may be that there's some kind of bug that jumped up there in Firefox. You'd do that sometimes. Usually when there's something's happening erratic, it's actually because the machine is being a little overworked. So let's just uh, 
forgot what I was going to, oh, I was going to go to photos. Well, photos still to this day uses quite a bit of resource. Yeah, it's, it, the machine itself is, I guess, uh, all those, well, going to that graphic view of that, it's not really a good idea when it's working hard. What do we got? There sure is an awful lot of processes come, coming along there, isn't there? Awful lot. So I'm going to end Firefox. Sometimes you can end it and, there could have been some processes that never closed the last time I had it open, and I just didn't notice it. Shut down easy enough. Usually, when a program's really kind of mucking up, it um, doesn't want to close either. Sometimes you got to kill it. I'll try one more time, and we'll see. No, I don't. That's Chromium, but I don't use it either hardly ever because it uses a whole lot more resources. Firefox and I don't like it. I can't a lot. Chrome. <clears throat> Either I mean Chromium is the granddaddy of Chrome. That's what Chrome is built up of is a Chromium project. But uh, um, let's see now that's beginning to act normal. Yeah, something went wrong in Firefox. Is really what was wrong. Yep, that's what it was. Something just went wrong in Firefox. So it wasn't that the machine was overwhelmed, really. It was Firefox that was overwhelmed. I, think. I was just going to go to Photos because of the way I was talking about it. And uh, now there's a bunch of pictures. I Oh, those are screenshots I took of videos trying to figure out how to, what was wrong with my dryer. And, uh, oh, prints. Yeah, they're going to sell prints. Might not be a bad uh, deal. I think they want you to subscribe, though. I'm not subscribing to anything. I buy something when I want it, when I need it. Okay, here we go. Upload. Oh, that's upload. Let's see. What I'm looking for is transfer. Never did say the, the point of the story there. I transferred them from... Um, photos to YouTube and there was a box where you could put a name in there and I thought well that's a good sounds like a good idea so I said okay here's here's the my album this is what I did this right here I think it's these exact words what am I doing that I'm going to make it it's edit mode when you do that so oh there's my rig right there um, I'll show it in a second. Um, so, um, I, it, there was a box saying, do you want, you know, you want to give it a name? And I was somehow, I'm my, I must've been tired like I am right now. I put that name in there thinking it would give each one, you know, like 001, 002 or part, you know, at the end, it, I thought it was going to automatically number them or something. 101 videos with the same name. Well, why would they let you even do that? And so there was no way for me to, to ever spend that year of work, you know. Man, I, I just didn't, uh, what I should have done at the time was just delete. Uh, well, I even had a chance, I realized it before it was done uploading, and I thought, well, maybe when it's done, it'll do it. I knew it. So anyway, I, I could have stopped it, or I could have deleted them all, and I didn't want to delete them until I knew for sure I was ready to re-upload them again. What I should have done is not put anything in that blank that they had there. And it would have just given them the original file name. And I actually already knew that. You know, I just had a brain fart. I don't know why it says that on there. Say something. And you, what you do is you type something. Okay, look at this. Um, it's not going to the full view of it. Here, let me get on the desktop itself. So don't have to see me about half asleep over there. Let's see. Uh, everything looks good. Okay. I just want to make sure because that since Firefox act up, it made me think, yeah, that's getting big, 4.7 gigabytes. Okay, it should. Oh, I'm in edit album mode because when I clicked on that title, it went straight into edit album mode. Okay, now let's. There we go. Now, I can't really make it big. I mean, you can do that, but 
Okay, that's okay. Just, I was afraid you was going to get two. Uh, so I did a walk around of my rig. That's my rig I've been talking about. I call it my redneck uh, video camera rig. It'll just go, yeah, it'll keep playing over and over as long as I sit here because it's a, uh, it's not an animation, I don't think. It might be. <clears throat> I made a, I, I'm, it's a video I made, but I think this is an animation. You see, I had my car, my cart. That was my tools that are always normally under it anyway. So I had a keyboard on there, two computers. Can you pause it? Yeah, you can pause it. So, uh, and I had extension card going to it. I used a couple of straps there to keep them from falling off of there. I had speakers on there so that I could play back videos when I needed to. And it's running right then and there. You can see, yeah, that's me walking around it doing the deal, doing the video. And I don't know why I made it that short. Oh, I know why, because I made it with that camera. The only other way I had to make video, it would be that, yeah, that Nikon camera that my buddy gave me has a real good lens, Nikon lens. It's only like 1.7 or 1.2 megapixels. But it would do a 14-second video, silent. That's all it would do. But it took real good pictures. So I would do, I did that a lot. I had the still shots. You can't see. I had this on my little short tripod that my buddy gave me on the, I don't know if it shows it, but those are like, yeah, Pentium ones. I think they're both Pentium ones. Could be one of them's a one and one's a two. You can't see it. I didn't get the whole thing <clears throat> up there, but <clears throat> that's the little tripod and it's, I used duck, good old duct tape to hold it on there. And both of those webcams are on, on the top of there. And, uh, yeah, this plays, let's see, how do you get out of this? Oh, I'm in the full screen. So, uh, yes, oh, I did say something. I said what it was. So, um, there's one of the, another one of those kind of videos. See, I was going to integrate these. I was going to edit these in to the right spot, these little silent videos. So when I was talking about what I was doing, uh, there, I was going to edit those in to where they were supposed to be. Now, this is that mechanism, and you see all the welding on it. <coughs> um, I don't know. This TV, I just remembered, this TV up converts stuff and makes it look better. It may not look as good on the video itself. It may be real blurry. But that's after I welded the thing that had broken off that whole area. And it, that slide, that's the slider. <coughs> <coughs> and, uh, and there's one of how how it works just to show the working of the mechanism <clears throat> a little roller just a nylon roller but one of them's gone that's one reason why it was always falling off that's the other side uh, had found uh, actually had it somewhere I got a hold of a drawer slide with a nylon roller it was about the right size but <coughs> never <coughs> That was kind of like spot welded on there. I never did try to replace it. I, I guess I was kind of figuring it wasn't really tough enough. <clears throat> There's one of it cranking. <clears throat> but it's, uh, But I'm, I guess I was just trying to show the weld there. <clears throat> yeah, I'm a delver, not a welder. That one, oh, I was trying to get too close for the camera. I guess that's the other side of the, uh, oh, no, I'm showing measurements. <clears throat> oh, there it is. That's a drawer slide, and I was kind of, at that time, I was getting ready to try to do that. <coughs> there I was trying to figure out how 
What up, dude? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, but um, I'm gonna have. I'm trying to get a cough drop here. <clears throat> How many of these little short videos I have? I don't know why they're at the beginning of all that either. I have to open a new bag of cough drops to get them out. Um, there's another one. I guess I welded. Oh, I think I decided. Well, if one side broke, the other one will follow. So I welded them both. <clears throat> Trying to remember. Did I weld that with my little 110 volt arc welder? It looks about like I did. I must have. I guess that was before. I, I have a wire welder now. And I can do better than that with it. But that looks like it hardly even stuck. <laughs> That's what it looks like. That must have been that little 110 volt arc roller that I got back in 1976. 75, 76. Still have it, still works, but it's it's only 70 amps. <clears throat> it'll only, the only thing it'll melt is uh, eight inch rods. And <laughs> the rods I have are from back then. I bought them from a weld. A, we went to a place I worked. I did maintenance on gas stations and car washes, and we had a welding company that we'd go to to get stuff welded for us when we needed it. And I, that, I bought some rods from them. I asked them why I couldn't melt rods on that thing. <laughs> they kind of laughed. But, and they said, well, maybe it'll melt, melt these. And it did. <clears throat> but they're, they've been damp so many different times over the years. That definitely doesn't help. <clears throat> they kept theirs in old refrigerators to keep them dry. Well, that's okay. Here we go. And that camera would do that when you first turned it on. Sometimes. Too pixelated to make it big. <clears throat> oh, it's still pixelated. Why is it so pixelated when it's regular size? Oh, I know why. Because I've got my <clears throat> screen set to 240%. Still pixelated like crazy. Something wrong with that particular video, I think. That's what size it actually is. <laughs> That's my headset, Mike. That's the blazer. <clears throat> so anyway, I don't think I need to sit here and keep going through this. Oh, here's the uh, here's the cameras the way I had them mounted. Shining on 
also we're going to turn it to school choice. See, so I had to walk off. <clears throat> so yeah, <clears throat> I'd forgotten about that. And those those little angle brackets are still on that tripod. It's sitting over there holding up my <clears throat> holding my uh, endoscope. <clears throat> I don't know why this particular video doesn't look so bad. I might have worked on it, tried to upscale it. <clears throat> and now it looks bad. I guess it was just depending on I have to go back to the regular size to get it to go to the next video <clears throat> Can't hear what I'm saying because I got it turned down. <clears throat> Maybe low on the video too. I'm not sure if that affects that or not. <coughs> <coughs> anyway. <clears throat> Those I transferred. Oh yeah, I forgot. I was trying to look and see if you can still if you do it from here. You used to do it from YouTube, <clears throat> but there's a, <clears throat> it's a week's worth of videos. <clears throat> oh, this is newer video on my phone. It's shaking because it's hanging <clears throat> from a that uh, that's bug sprayer. That is a bug sprayer, and I had to get it out because this thing. I didn't know where it was, but it had a wasp nest right up in the front grill, <clears throat> and I hadn't found it yet, but I was spraying everywhere I saw any of them. And that's what's nice about working on the blazer. You can just crawl in the hood, and if it's cold, you can just shut the lid and get it in work. You can go camping in there. <clears throat> Well, that was the last time I worked on it. The, car, the carburetor is still in the garage waiting for me to... <clears throat> At that time, I was trying to get it ready to inspect. Horn wouldn't work. I went around and around for two days trying to figure that out. It turned out to just be a rusty ground where I was. <clears throat> trying everything under the sun, not thinking of the most obvious. <clears throat> but it wouldn't run. I thought I had it ready to test drive and it wouldn't even back itself out of the driveway. Turned out I had a broken spark plug and the car was stopped up from sitting for too much and I don't drive it hardly at all. So I took the carburetor off, ordered a rebuild kit and I still haven't got that done. And what, I mean, that was the last, yeah, last thing I did. Here's the carburetor, <clears throat> Holly 600. <clears throat> But these videos are on YouTube, but most of them I never did. They were just the name, you know, that was given them by the camera. 
or the phone <clears throat> like vid and a number <clears throat> and I never did uh, there's when I was working on the wheel bearings when they were I think they're really badly out of order what's the background noise This is 2009. That was just about three years ago, those other ones. Oh, there was a tree trimming crew there that day. <clears throat> Run my audio. They were there for hours. But I had, I had to keep working because I had to get that done. If those cameras would do some of the wildest things sometimes when you'd first turn them on. But these ones are not on YouTube anymore. <clears throat> because, okay, so I accidentally uploaded them and gave them the whole, all the same name. <clears throat> and then they were all up for years and years, and nobody ever watched more, hardly any of them. They're all the same name. It looks like the same video, you know, except for maybe if you notice they have different previews on them, screen, uh, thumbnails. And, uh, <clears throat> oh, no, I was using my, I, I can't, I can't excuse my welding. That's my wire welder. I did use it. <clears throat> Was it MIG welder? It'll actually do, it would do aluminum if I bought the bottle. TIG. I'm finally beginning, I've been watching welding videos. I'm finally beginning to remember the name. TIG, MIG and TIG. That's a MIG welder, but if I bought the bottle of gas and it's got a conversion kit <clears throat> and it would do aluminum and that's one of the reasons why I bought it, but after all these years, I've had it for probably 15 years, I guess, now. I never have uh, done that. Anyway, these, uh, I finally realized I'm never going to rename those one at a time. This is doesn't seem to be all the videos. It looked like 100 to me. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, I decided one day to delete them and re-upload them. Well, that was a bad idea. And, and, you know, and not mess with the names. <clears throat> and at least the names will be right. <clears throat> be descriptive names, you know, tell them what's going on and all that. <clears throat> and what happened was, these are such a old and small format. They're MPEG videos, I believe. Let's see if I can see the... Uh, well, that might be, yeah, that's one of those YouTube video things. They're kind of cool. I went, some of them I liked and I saved. Some of them were terrible. But um, they're out of order. I can tell that. I tried to reorder them, I think, but. <clears throat> Let's see. That's not the information. Which one's the information? This one? Yeah. It's too small for me to read now. Make it bigger. So, yeah, there's the name. <clears throat> Can't see it now, but <clears throat> it says 2012. That's when I uploaded it to Google Photos, which actually was in 09. <clears throat> now here's the the uh I don't know why that has something different up there than what it has right here. But that's the the fall name right there. And uh <clears throat> I'm trying to see. 105, uh, there is 105. Well, that might be all of them together. 
Yeah, that's all of them in that. I always want to call it a playlist. They call it yeah, an album. <clears throat> but um, I'm scared I'll mess something up if I click on it. Oh, that just took me to it. That's weird. That's really weird. So uh, <clears throat> I was trying to see. I thought it was going to show the codec and uh, all that stuff. I don't see it. MPEG, MPG. <clears throat> so the old original MPEG format, they don't take that on YouTube anymore. <clears throat> 0.5 of a megapixel. 800 by 600. Oh, okay. I thought it was smaller than that. So I was able to get 800 by 600 out of that. Uh, evidently, out of that one camera. And... Uh, yeah, I think I have all of the still shots on photos as well somewhere. I guess I didn't want to put them in that album. <clears throat> but um, So when I deleted them, then I was like, and, and they wouldn't let me re-upload them. I turned around and was going to re-upload them all and uh, couldn't. <clears throat> so uh, I thought, well... I kind of started thinking maybe I'll actually edit them. Then I thought, I don't know about all that. Then I thought, well, maybe I'll just convert them <clears throat> to the newer format and try to. I thought, well, I'll try to convert them and up convert them. And I thought, well, I think you can kind of, uh, there's some apps you can do that with, like, you know, say change it to MP4 and also try to up convert it some. Well, these are the newer ones anyway, but, but. Then I found out about an application called Deoldify, and they make, I've seen, there's quite a few videos on YouTube, you know, like they've got the old NASA footage from the moon and everything else, and they're running it through that program. It's an AI program that, and it will, uh, they make it look really good. I mean, they don't ruin it, <clears throat> make it look un, un, unreal. It just makes it so much clearer, and they, they've been make, bringing them up to 4K. I don't know that I would do that. I will just go like 1080 or something. Well, but this is 4.3 aspect ratio, so. Uh, well, but those were even less, uh, a weirder aspect ratio. The moon videos were even a weirder aspect ratio on the ones they did. It, I don't know. I'd have to learn the program, and I haven't even tried yet, but that's what I would like to do with these. Is the older file, and I don't think I would ever go ahead and do all that editing I was talking about. <clears throat> but if I could run them through the older file and make them look good, you know, uh, I'd love to do that. Some of the audio is pretty good. Some of it's messed up because of background noise and stuff. That mic is a condenser mic, and it picked up everything. But uh, I even when I. Somewhere in there, <clears throat> there's videos of me when I was welding. So I thought, well, I'll just uh, put my welding helmet on and left the mic on under it, and you could hear me talking just plain as day every, while I was working. Actually kind of improved the sound because it blocked out a bunch of the background noise. <clears throat> but then, <clears throat> then this happened. Let's see if this is the one. That must not be the one I thought it was. That's the same one I showed a while ago. Anyway, what happened is I forgot about that. I was talking about the carburetor being clogged up, but before that, what got me to messing with it is the uh, there's a transfer tube that that shares the gas between the front bowl and the back bowl, and. Uh, it was leaking. It has O-ring seals, and it was leaking real bad. I'm trying to find the little... I can't see the line so that I can... There it is. So I can go forward. Oh, this... I had... What I was doing is running two cameras. <clears throat> one was a wide shot, and the other one was a close-up. And I had all kinds of trouble. Though. Well, for one thing, it was hot, you know, and... Uh, but I had trouble with, okay, they won't run more than like 20 minutes since they're plugged in. Well, half the time I would accidentally unplug them. The other half the time, the, 
They don't might overheat and shut down. Or overheat and start rebooting. And uh, so I, you know, didn't get all the footage I was trying to make. But I have video somewhere. It must might not be in this in this album here, but I have a, several videos of where the road the tube was leaking. It's on the right side of the carburetor. <coughs> These look like just me when I was trying to get it ready to, this would be after that, I guess. Because, yeah, I put that on there first. There's the tube right there. Anyway, I made a couple of quick videos of it leaking. That's just me telling that the camera's messed up. That looked cool. How that light did that. Yeah, that's the close-up camera. But I had... Uh, <clears throat> what was it? Oh, before I figured out that the spark plug broke, I thought I had valve problems because that's what it acted like. Um, and I... Uh, Took the valve cover off the upside, and I was listening around with the screwdriver, sticking it on your ear, and then put it where it's at, because it was making a terrible noise, tap like a, it almost, it almost scared me. I thought it could be either a valve hitting something or <clears throat> even a bad bearing, and it really just turned out. <clears throat> I finally discovered that <clears throat> I was taking the plugs out, and one of them just broke in my hand, <clears throat> and uh, the porcelain, you know, the tail just broke off of it. And um, then I had been watching a lot of videos to try to learn, you know, figure things out. I mean, I, I, I used to know this truck from head to tail, you know. I had it since 92 and worked on it all these years. <clears throat> but uh, And I used to work on cars a lot. But a lot of that stuff I was beginning, I'm beginning to forget that I already knew. But this is something I don't really remember ever knowing. Uh, when you have a dead plug like that. It will sound, it will make it thump. It will make it sound like you might have a bad bearing or, or a valve hitting something or something like that. It will actually make it. And I, I know what it, I mean, it sounded, I've had, I had a bad rod bearing that, that I kept driving when I was very young. When I, um, <clears throat> well, I kind of had to where I was. I was in Colorado. But uh, I kept driving it until it threw rod through the block. And I knew it was pretty, pretty bad, but I didn't know it was that bad when it was knocking. So it's an old wear out six cylinder in my 64 panel truck, and I just thought it was knocking because it was working too hard. I'd heard a lot of stories that you know that you could they had to drive for a long time and stuff. No, they don't do that, they blow, <laughs> but uh, like the bacon, he's in bacon run for uh, there's a horn relay and some other relay, I think. That was the horn relay. I remember what I think that's for the light, something to do with the light. Blinkers. Oh, yeah, one's a blinker relay and one's a horn relay. I don't remember which one's which now. I think maybe the white one might be the horn relay and that's the blinker relay. I'm pretty sure the can, silver can, is a bl blinker relay. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> that's what I was jabbering about is my old blazer all this time. And yeah, and these videos. I'd forgotten I'd made all those little. 15 second videos. See, some of those are about an hour long, some are 20 minutes. I just stopped them whenever I, you know, needed to go. Like maybe I knew I was going to go in the house for a while or whatever, or I was going to change where I was going to be or something. There's something odd to me, though. It seems like there's not near as many videos here as there should be, but maybe I just remembered that. Thought there was more videos in this series than there was. Some of them I may have either not found or you know to put in here, or uh, cause that's where it's that's a uh, let's see. Yeah, this is newer, so that'd be the last one of that series. You see, I had my SM58 out there. Some I. What I was trying to do is make a series out of it. You know, I was, uh, 
I would come out and do an intro each day, and then and I'd stand in front of the garage door so I could. I thought, well, I'm going to use that so that I could use green, use it as a green screen. You can turn the something white like that to green or blue, and then put uh, you know text back there, or just put text you know on the wall. Uh, didn't have to be a green screen, but use it as a backdrop for putting up your your text and stuff at the your intro text. See, there's some shots of where I uh, left plenty of space for before I walk in, you know. I'm not quite sure why one of those is. They're different videos. They're different links. One of them's a lot different color. I had Mike trouble there. Might have been trying to use a different mic. I didn't know it was buzzing. I'm down here. Here's Today and, uh, something went wrong with the cable there, it looks like. Just buzzing. That was the 58, I think. <laughs> Camera did that. So I was watching the monitor until it was ready to use. 30, 30 set set video. video. Um, we're going to have to do some part part portion portion today. today. See, what, was, see if the rotor, rotor looks like, like it needs to be turned. <coughs> and, uh, I'm thinking. No, I guess we'll see as we go. I'm still drinking my coffee. Uh, and they woke me up yet. <laughs> no, I don't actually drink Maxwell House. I uh, got this cup years ago from uh, Burger King. They used to give you free refills if you free refills if you bought this cup. Oh, good. Good. There's more on the line. So I don't like their coffee anyway. I drink that freshly grounded from the bean stuff now. Okay. Uh, well. <coughs> that was a big project. <coughs> I did enjoy it. And, uh, and the other thing was, uh, I, and this is funny, it's just like one of those made-up fake shows, but uh, I started it early. I had a week, but I, the next weekend, I was going to go to a reunion, and that's what I had to drive, so I had to get it done. <laughs> and, of course, uh, just, like, just like Roadkill, Instead of uh, just sticking with just the one, the important plan, you know, getting the this done, getting the that done, and making sure that's all I really needed to kill myself to do, I got into working on the rear tailgate and had made it up with double projects. I did finish it the day before the reunion. Of course, I never got any rest, and. Uh, But I ended up going to that. Oh, you pick the wrong thing. Ended up going to it and enjoyed it, and also did that. Of course, that was all. I was thought I was old then, but I was young. <laughs> 2009. That's uh, 10, 11, 12. What, 12 years ago? I'm trying to go back to the beginning there. Yeah, these are not videos, or my. Or those are not my pictures I've taken. They're screenshots. Now, here's pictures of my. Some of them are screenshots of my pictures because I was finding the ones I wanted. This is my dryer. That's the most recent thing. And then, <clears throat> then you go for a very long time. Oh, and I used to my. I was using one of my phones as a security. <coughs> and I was. Uh, <coughs> Good camera stuck up in my window, and it would take pictures and upload them. I had to, well, Google Photos would upload them. I didn't get them all, but and really, I didn't need them all either. I think those are just when I was messing with it. But uh, yeah, oh, there's the security. There's so many of those. That's my band. It's probably too dark. About the same, but I was looking through the screen on the window, so you never got a real good picture out of it. But it would record that says four and a half minutes. I was thinking it did five minutes, but and then it would stop. 
And that's the app that I use, IP Webcam. So when you're say, actually recording videos, it puts that watermark up there. doesn't do that if you're just using it to stream with. It, it's a good app. If I, if I had a use, you need to uh, all the extra features, I would definitely pay for it. And I like open source and free software. I haven't really found too many things I wanted to pay for all these years. <clears throat> yeah and that van needs some work too my uncle gave me that before he passed on it's a pretty cool van but it does need work needs more work than the blazer there's two 76 blazer that was the one I went to I think this one might be the different one that has Oh, no, that's something else. Yeah, somebody scratched something on there. Uh, but I, I thought it had happened there in the driveway, but then I finally realized that I had uh, loaned the truck to a friend years ago, 2000. Uh, I got a job, and I had bought me a brand-new 2000 Silverado when I was traveling, working, installing telecommunications equipment. And... Uh, <clears throat> So there's all those album ones. Okay, so, um, and I left the truck with him because he didn't have anything good to drive and he was supposed to come and get hired on. I'd already told him about him and they were, probably would, I'm pretty sure they would have hired him. He's a young, young, young fella. He was probably 18. To, uh, I imagine he was 19 or 20 at the time. And uh, anyway, he was real good with mechanics. He grew up, his dad ran a, Rented. It was not a regular junkyard. He had all kinds of really cool old vintage cars in there, but he really a more of a garage. He'd work on stuff. And he well, his dad welded my door. He, he he brazed it, and he didn't use brazing rod. He used coat hanger, and that was back in the mid uh, late nineties, I think, mid to late ninety five and after somewhere in there. And that's still just as solid as the day he did it. And it, it had to, it, uh, up in the door, driver's door, it was cracking the where the, you know, where around the hinges. And it was, the door was sagging so bad. If I left it any longer, it was going to fall out there, you know, break it all anyway. And uh, it took him about 20 minutes, I think, to do it. <clears throat> well, I don't, I'd seen people do it before. I knew some people were praised with, coat hanger but i didn't think it was strong and it would stay good i think it held i think it bonded better and he didn't grind it down or do any of that stuff he just i think he might hit it with the torch a bit just to kind of burn some of the paint off and uh but uh, uh i never got to learn to do uh you know settling torch stuff i never had one but i did i knew how to sweat pipe and all stuff like that with a propane torch but and anyway that is my sidetrack i was going on and on about just getting up on six gigabyte a long video about let's see how long it is. three hours and 24 minutes last time i thought looked at the time it was two hours i mean one hour now i can't see my eyes are blurry i can't even see what it looks like there's some missing, but I don't. I know there's not. There it is. Okay, <clears throat> that's what I was looking for. Well, okay, one more time. We'll just see. Sometimes these, uh, when these phones get all streaming, the audio especially, uh, it doesn't use as much bandwidth. But sometimes it'll empty out the cache and all, like I was talking about, and start working. I bet it didn't. Let's see. It doesn't use as much bandwidth, but sometimes it'll. Empty out the cache and all like I was talking about and start working about it. I bet it didn't. Let's see. Well, I saw that it was still talking, so I knew that was <laughs> what I had said already, so there wasn't no point in talking over myself. Okay. Well, one good thing, I've kind of gotten used to using this mouse a little more. It's still hard for me to hit the places I want to click on, but I can do that. 
Uh, if I was real, if I was really typing and stuff, I can't type on this keyboard hardly at all. It's a <clears throat> wireless keyboard, and it's not. It is laid out pretty much like my oh, my real keyboard, <laughs> my HP. That's good, but it's still not the same distance between everything, you know. And the, it does have volume and buttons and play buttons, but they're punch buttons instead of my, my HP keyboard has a big round knob that I twist for the volume and stuff. <clears throat> but I was, I've been doing it all day, so I kind of got used to it enough that I was able to do it just now. I've had this other machine running all day so that I could preview my stream. I could keep it running for my stream so that I could see. Well, I don't have to do, I was fixing to close. I just saw that Firefox is running in it. Um, and I, I don't think I'm going to, I'm pretty tired now. I think I'm going to have to eat. <laughs> eat. I didn't take, I really need to take a bath and shave, but I think I'm getting so tired I'm going to eat and go to bed. I never did get up and eat anything. How did I, oh, I, I know what happened. You know, I ate a chocolate and that was like, I felt like it wasn't doing much good and then started coughing and I, a ricotta and those are just pure sugar uh, i mean the coffin stuff the natural whatever i forgot what's in it echinacea i think or something anyway it works really well but it's so much sugar that it gave me a boost and i had two of them now so but now but it also my eyes are blurry and i'm tired and sleepy that's why <laughs> that and i'm just tired because i've been it's 3 40 i've been up since midnight so that's quite a bit longer than I often, you know, I, a lot of times I will like be back in bed 12 hours later or eating and then going to bed, you know, so it's like 12, 13, 14 hours and then I go to bed. But this is 12, almost, almost four more hours. So. But then some, lately I've been like I get started on like working on the dryer. I, I worked on it 13 hours one day. I can't believe I actually did that physical work that long and made it of course i was more screwed out and but i ended up two or three days working on the dryer and then i got it working still not completely finished because i ended up i've ended up figuring out that the exhaust pipe has got a full of lint i can't well i looked at it with my endoscope and i all i could see is white and it wouldn't go but four or five feet up and it's like a 10 foot cable and it's stiff enough it would have went all the way up if it didn't hit anything so I bought one of those dryer brush cleaning things that you put on your grill, but I haven't, haven't uh, felt, you know, ready to do that yet. But also, it's, well, it, I don't know if it's still, it's still. Uh, <clears throat> look at the weather here. I know everybody wants to see the weather here in Texas. But no, we hardly. We, we the last several years we hardly. We luck if we get one or two little halfway snow. You know, a little bit of snow. But this this week, we we'll see. Was it yesterday when it started? We started temperature. I mean, it was you know six anywhere anywhere from forty to seventy one two degrees every week. You know, every other day it was just going back and forth uh, for the last month at least. We haven't really had much winter at all this year until now. And now we've got winter. And that's what I was going to look at it. Okay, said so that. Today's high, 29. Tonight, 22. Ice. Freezing drizzle. Uh, 28, 22. And then snow. They're still saying that we we got a good, well, it's kind of changed the chances. It was like 50, 30 or 50, 40. Now, it's 40 and 30% on Sunday. Washington's birthday. That's Monday. Oh, because they, they moved it forward. It was like Saturday night, Sunday. They're saying snow. Now they moved it forward. Oh, and Wednesday it might snow. And it still had not got 14 degrees. We ain't seen 14 degrees in years. 50% chance of snow on Wednesday. They kept kind of saying this is going to last longer than we usually get. Because usually we get one to three days and then it's all over with. It's already been, what's today? Friday. I don't think you can go back. If I could go back see <clears throat> i like this forecaster and it's really pretty accurate it's really for people that fly airplanes it's, it's called air sports it's got all kinds of information that would be pertinent to them 
But it's been at least two days. Actually, when did I do? I th- oh, I got. I was really tired, and I. Yeah, the day that it started, I went to bed and slept twenty four hours because I had been up twenty two hours. That's what I was fixing to say, and I wasn't, you know, working on the dryer. This, this is that was a week week ago now. I was uh, all I did was I got on. I started making videos and streaming. Yeah, I was doing some streaming and stuff. But but, but uh, wow. So. Uh, <clears throat> I love to get videos of the snow because we don't get it very often. But I may only only be able to get it from uh, my maybe try to get some of it off my surveillance camera. <laughs> it's sunny now. Started to click on the camera and look at it, but I can see all the sun. Earlier, it it was it would look like a winter day and like it could snow any moment this morning earlier. But no, it, it's sunny. But uh, it's really, really funny how I switch just switch gears without uh, knowing it really, and can't, like I've just been talking about this and that and the other, and I don't really remember what all I was talking about. I just knew I wanted to finish that story about the blazer videos for it why i even wanted well once i started it i just had to finish it but i like to never got through it and i didn't even think about like showing video, the, the you know some of the actual videos i was talking about until i just something hit me go to photos but photos i think the way you used to transfer i guess you can't do it anymore i forgot to <clears throat> look around the app I will go in there one more time because I really want to know, can you still do that? I thought, well, maybe they made it so you can do it from photos, but I'm pretty sure you did it in YouTube and you said transfer from. I know you did. You said transfer from photos. (coughs) It was right there at the... (coughs) Go to. I'll just go back to YouTube for a second. See, like, what if I'm just on YouTube instead of um, you know, upload videos? <clears throat> Select files or drag and drop. And that's it. There used to be a deal that would say you had more than one choice. I think even before this came up, and you could transfer from photos. It was kind of hard to, maybe they quit it because they don't want you to do bulk uploads anymore because <clears throat> it's obvious they don't like that anymore. They won't let you do, I see, you can do 10. I think you can maybe, I think, I don't know if it has to do with the size as well, but I think the most, I tried to do like 30 videos the other day that I hadn't got uploaded yet. And I had to do it in two separate sessions. I couldn't, couldn't do them all. Uh, I was kind of looking over here at this, but I don't see anything about uploading over there. I guess that's where I'm at. It says content. They're changing the words for everything, so it's harder and harder to get around the thing. <clears throat> but uh, so yeah, I don't. I can't imagine really another place to go to try to see if you could. What dashboard is that? That used to be for dashboard used to be for uh, where you went to do your live streams and to do everything to do with them. Oh, I'm not doing a live video. I can say, well, I, I'll just check on my stream, but I'm not doing a live video. Now it's like this, and I like to never. I thought you couldn't. It wouldn't come in. Like when I was streaming, it wouldn't come in. It wouldn't show that it was streaming, and. Uh, Actually, I guess it just wasn't working because one day it was, and I saw it. And then if you click right there, I know I like never saw those stream health. That's what I was wanting. I wanted to see the little bar that you know, green and green, yellow, red bar that, and see the preview. Make sure my stream was working. Um, but now I know how to do it. So 
just found it on accident. But uh, I'm going to have to look one more time at photos. Come on. I have, you know, I've been noticing the last, just the last few days that uh, sometimes I thought pages were taking too long to load, but it's not that. It's our, uh, either the Google, you know, website is not responding well or the uh, uh, Firefox is, is like, it, it's always getting updated a lot now and it may have, the last update might have some sort of. Apps upload. That's what I was. Computer drive. Okay, but that's to put it in photos. Download backup and sync. Well, at least that's easy to find now. <clears throat> Let me look at it one more time. Google Drive. From. From Google Drive. Recent my drive. I'm wondering why. What are, what are all these doing in Drive? I thought stuff that was in Drive counted against your space that we're fixing to lose anyway. What is it? Oh yeah, we don't lose it, but yeah, well, I can't remember. What are they doing? see it just looks like my normal thing oh that said recent so maybe that was photos all of photos shared with me stars I haven't messed with Google Drive in so long. <clears throat> That's funny. That's just a picture that I accidentally, well, I don't want to do anything to it. I wanted to see it. Anyway, you can't really make it out there, but it, it was my reflection. Uh, this is the, the start button on, well, my mom, I have, a, I have two of those boxes, but the start button on the computer, and it's all, plastic chrome you know and it made it look like I, it, my reflection was in there it made it look like I was a cyborg and I got a big kick out of that I think I cropped it to just see that part or something so the utilities are just the uploading software I wonder if sharing you know, can you like send it to YouTube or something those are my uh, looks like that's my what you call it? <clears throat> albums. I already clicked on upload, didn't I? Yeah. Oops. Upload slash photo high quality. Yeah, if you want to put more stuff up there, you got until like next summer, and then you're gonna have to start. And uh, if I guess if you get like what do you have 15 gigabyte or something if you go over that the ones that are already there will stay but I I knew that would happen sometime they let us let us do it for quite a few years oh unsupported videos only one that's why Modet why isn't that one MKV. That means all the video that when if I use MKV, they won't be supported. Oh, that's from a video camera. No, that's from Modet, that motion detect. That's from the camera itself. It's only 28 kilobytes. It's probably a bad video, is what it is. There's only one. I don't think you can see it if it won't. Oh, yeah, you can just select it. I don't want to even think about it right now. I'm sure it just needs to be deleted. But <clears throat> Utilities. 
Yeah, so there's no way to transfer videos to YouTube from photos anymore. I didn't know that. Movie animation. Claws. Oh, they don't have those goofy... They used to have that whole goofy... They said you were editing, but it was like just different variations of slideshows that you could only do the titles they gave you, and they were sucky, not really. Move photos to archive. Back up photos from your computer. Yeah, that's... Yeah, you can only steal to this day, and they're the ones that built... Uh, I mean, they they build Android on top of Linux, but yet they won't make a, any kind of a Linux app to upload from a you know a Linux desktop or your laptop or whatever. Windows, Mac, <coughs> they're a big competitor, but uh, not Linux. And then the you know the apps for the tablets and phones. So if if I want, I, it doesn't matter now because I can't do it. I, I've, I've been meaning to back. I've got lots and lots more videos I would like to have backed up, but I had to set up a dedicated Windows machine just to do that, and I just have not. I thought I'd do it, but I have not done it. You know, have never got to want to bad enough to do it. <clears throat> so uh, I guess it doesn't really matter so much now. I mean, it's... Well, now that, you know, I do have videos, I think, that uh, since I got this camera here, I know I got a bunch of videos that are higher quality than they're going to, they're going to down, downgrade them, you know, so there's not much point in uploading them. And I do have backups. I have, uh, oh, I was on desktop already. Um, like on the on the server, I already had this, but the eight terabyte USB drive, a Seagate USB drive, I plugged it into the server so I can back up to it, and I have a five terabyte that's plugged into my Lenovo i5. That was my original backup drive, and what I was doing is I would have Lucky backup back up to the five terabyte, and then I would, uh, then it would automatically after that it would run another, uh, it would. It would back up from the five terabyte to the eight terabyte. But once I got the server up and running, then I split them off. And they're both getting full now, so I'm going to have to get, <clears throat> get uh, well, the, the Lenovo, uh, I probably won't need to because I, I hardly ever, I don't run it much anymore, and I won't be backing up, you know, a bunch of videos and stuff. It's got, like, so I can look and see how much space it has. It's running. on the icon but uh that, that never has worked very good if you do like double click on something on the icon on uh made uh, mess bait desktop it doesn't always open yeah i have left that thing sitting there waiting for me to look at it all these hours I'm trying to remember how to get that sure does look funky when it does that oh yeah Oh, the eight terabyte. Let's see. I can look in here to see that. The other one, I don't know if it's going to open up, or I guess it could be best to wait anyway. Seven point three terabyte is all that it actually really has usable space, and two point eight terabyte free. So you know, I'm not in real desperate need, but boy, especially now that I've been. I've been making a, a bunch of videos on the camera itself at 4K, and boy, those are huge files. I like this one here. It's 6.5 terabyte. Well, this is this is uh, it's not the highest resolution, you know, because I earlier in these videos I was showing how I got uh, YouTube will take the 1440. It won't take the uh, I guess I guess that's really too what they consider 2K. So it won't take, well, that thing's really looking funky. Uh, I don't remember ever seeing it do that. I don't know if that's, uh, it's showing, oh, I see what it's doing. You're catching the, uh, the transfer, the, the fade between the, uh, the white, uh, white of the file manager and the, uh, you know, just the audio, basically just mostly just the audio, uh, window there, the bottom middle. Ah. <sighs> 
But, um, well, I am really still a bit disappointed that I didn't, I was all completely ready to stream, but I didn't, I had to go around and around and around getting my audio working right. And by the time I got the, the, uh, gain structure figured back out again between the mixer, the, this and the, you know, the input on the computer and all that, my, uh, that was so many hours that my, <laughs> my, my, I was going to use the streaming camera. I mean, the audio on cam three to do my audio while I installed my new cable going from the mixer to the VM because I'd been showing it and talking about it. Wonder if there was problems with it. Thought, well, I'll do it in a video. And of course I needed a way to have audio. So that's why I had the third mic set up. You know, normally I just use two. It's good to have two. Well, I, you know, I almost always, I may start a stream thinking all I need is CSM 58, but then all of a sudden I want to get up, but I can't, you know, with, uh, and have audio. But if I, so I always have, I used to always have the cam three and SM 58. Now I've been using the Bluetooth, uh, of the dual lapels and on cam two and the SM58. But, um, I think we're on the, uh, Oh no, 62.9 free out of 174 gig. That's the main drive on this. Four point. I labeled it 4.5 because that made me mad that it's not really five terabyte. So we've got 265 gigabyte free out of 4.5 terabytes on this drive. Which, unless I decided to make a bunch of videos or something, that would be that's the only reason I would really be filling it up because I just hardly ever turn it on anymore now. So I might not really need to buy one for this machine. And uh, that would be good. Okay, so. Well, <clears throat> um, at least I know I can, unless I'm doing lots of typing, like if I'm looking stuff up on the desktop video, I, I really won't. That's hard to do for me on this keyboard, but otherwise, and I've got, uh, got SM58 working good again. I sound, at least unless I have tried, when I listen back to this and I find out I've been talking for uh, four hours and there's a real bad problem that I de developed, you know, after the last test. I don't think so. I, I think it's good. Um, and I didn't go get on the Bluetooth at all, really, so during, during this video. So <clears throat> that could have, well, every time I showed my face, it would be, you know, way behind and just really weird to watch. Um, but that's really, the wireless I just like to use for when I'm going to be getting up moving around. I still can't, well, I, I don't know why that bugs me. I know what's wrong and all I need to do, what I need to do is, I need to charge them up now. I'm sure they were on gotten down. One of them had got, one of the phones had got down to 66 or 63 percent when I started this video. And I thought, well, I'm I'm just gonna do this and then try to make my video. Actually, I think I had decided I was gonna finish just do this test video. So I was realizing I was hungry, and then eat, and then I was gonna try to go ahead and make my video. But now instead, I made a four-hour test video. So I guess this is my video. <laughs> um, so uh, anyway, let's quit. We got one of those. Ah. Uh. Always think I got something else and I'm forgetting, but I'm sure there is. But it's I don't think it's important at this point. So yeah, that. I guess it's because it, I know that's, I feel like that's not fixed, but, uh, oh, you're not seeing the desktop again. This here, Cam Audio Cam 3, uh, I keep telling like it's not fixed, but once I, you know, uh, recharges the batteries, uh, reboot the uh, motor and the router, then it would work again just like it had. But you just can't get, especially, like I said, with the two 5 megapixel cameras, running all the time streaming even though you're not watching them they're still using up bandwidth not as much as when you're watching them but um 
just not getting the mileage out of these out of my streaming stuff as I used to because of that. My video, you know, audio and <clears throat> but uh, anyway. All right, so I'm gonna go finally and. Um, Uh, <coughs> I'm going to eat and I'm probably just going to eat and go to bed I think I'm tired alright 404 now and 3 hours and 51 minutes of video ok hmm. see you later